Hawks host Oakland for three on the 25th, 26th, and 27th, all 7 o'clock starts. It's a 5 p.m. start on Saturday the 29th at Fenway against the Angels. And the Mariners come to town on the 31st at 7. Fox Baseball Thursday has four games in August. And the Paw Sox hit Nesson for four games as well. It's a full month of baseball on Nesson. from Fenway Park in Boston, the New England Sports Network presents exclusive coverage of Boston Red Sox baseball. Tonight, it's the Red Sox against the Cleveland Indians. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the ballpark. I'm Bob Kurtz, along with Jerry Remy, and the Red Sox are finally back on home turf. Back here in New England, following a six-game road trip in which they lost three out of four in Baltimore and then split two games for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Now, the Sox have had pretty similar records this year as far as home and road, but uh, it is nice to be home. Well, one thing they do better at home is they certainly hit better here at Fenway Park than they do on the road, and that was evident on that last road trip. But look at the numbers for the season. 302 average here at Fenway, only 267 on the road. And, of course, I think this is a very critical part of the schedule for the Red Sox. Uh, they, the next uh, six games at Fenway, but most of them are going to be on the road until about August 11th, so that's a very tough stretch. They're going to have to play better there, but they've got to take advantage of the game they're playing here at Fenway Park, and the competition is going to be tough. You know, the Sox only have six home games between now and mid-August, these two against the Cleveland Indians, and then four later this month against the Toronto Blue Jays. We've got a terrific pitching matchup for you tonight. Pedro Martinez goes against the home. Well, how many times we have these kind of matchups in the course of a season? Not very often, and a lot of times we hype them so much that the starting pitchers don't only go about three innings in the ball game. but they really hooked up very well. Martinez, you see second in the American League, Cologne first. Opponents batting average, they're very very close, and they're in the top ten in strikeouts, with Martinez being second with a 147. So, they are with the wind blowing out here at Fenway Park, it may not make a difference because of these two pitches. Interesting matchup tonight. The Red Sox and Cleveland Indians both have identical records. 53 wins, 38 losses. Our pitching matchup tonight, Cologne against Martinez, all coming your way next, right here on Nesson. Mobile, introducing the fastest way to get gas, Mobile Speed Pass. It's free, and it's only at Mobile. And by Hoover, nobody gets the dirt like Hoover, nobody. Back home at Fenway Park here in Boston, where the weather is still pretty Florida-like for the Red Sox. Hazy, hot, and humid. A game-time temperature of 87 degrees. Sox are home for just a brief two games. The opposition provided by the Cleveland Indians. Mike Hargrove features Lenny, uh, Kenny Lofton leading off in center field. Then Omar Vizquel bats at the number two hold at shortstop. David Justice will hit third. He's the DH. Manny Ramirez, drive cleanup hitter. Brian Giles in left field. It's Travis Fryman at third base. Sandy Alomar handling the catching chores. Jeff Branson at first base, replacing Jim Tomey, who was hit in the forearm last night by an Andy Pettit fastball. And David Bell bats number nine and plays second base. And the defense tonight for the Red Sox, John Valentin will be at third base. Nomar Garcia Parra, the shortstop. Mike Benjamins at second and Mo Vaughn at first. Left to right will be Troy O'Leary, Darren Lewis, and Darren Bragg. Scott Hatterberg behind the plate. And on the mound, right-hander Pedro Martinez. Martinez 11-3 on the season. 2.90 ERA. That's second best in the American League to the guy he's pitching against tonight, Cologne. He is second in strikeouts with 147 behind Randy Johnson. And he's the toughest to hit in the American League with a 214 batting average against. Not involved in a decision uh, in a game uh, earlier in the season against the Indians. The Red Sox won that 3-2. to two. But in that ball game, Martinez went nine innings, only allowing four hits, and had 12 strikeouts. That's the season high for Pedro this season. Pedro lost his last time out against the Orioles. That snapped a five-game winning streak. So Martinez all set to go to work here against the Cleveland Indians tonight. Tonight's umpires are being brought to you by NAM, National Arbitration and Mediation, the most timely and cost-effective way to settle your legal disputes. Harry Kraft works behind the plate tonight. Veteran Jim McKean at first base, Dale Ford, the second base umpire, and Al Clark will be at third base. Very special night here at Fenway Park, special ceremony. This all-star time now. The game in uh, Coors Field is history. The Red Sox will host uh, one next July. Gathering on the field before the game, Lou Gorman, among others, to introduce the new all-star logo on the left field wall. Ladies and gentlemen, please turn your attention to the Green Monster as the 1999 
Austin home of a 1999 All-Star game here at Fenway Park next July as we get underway. Kenny Lofton takes the first pitch from Pedro Martinez for a called strike. President John Harrington part of that ceremony. Executive Vice President John Buckley joining Lou Gorman, American League President Dr. Gene Budig, and also General Manager Dan Duquette all on the field before the game. Now the Cleveland Indians are in town. Sox have had good success against the Tribe this year. Five wins in their six meetings. Martinez with a close pitch there on 0 2. One ball, two strikes on Lofton. Returning to the Indians this year as a free agent following his appearance last year as a member of the Atlanta Braves. It's a brief appearance here at the plate against Pedro Martinez as he blows a fastball by him for strike three. Well, Pedro picking up where he left off the last time he faced the Indians. We mentioned the 12 strikeouts and uh, throws the fastball right by Kenny Lofton to get his first of the night. Well, Martin is all set to go to work now against Omar Vizquel, who appeared in his first All-Star game this year. 296 for Vizquel. No homers, 30 runs batted in. Vizquel, the reigning gold glove winner at shortstop. As a matter of fact, he's a defending five-time champion. Rewarded by his manager, Mike Hargrove, selecting him to his first All-Star game. Vizquel sends this one in the air to center. Darren Lewis is there to make the catch for the second out. It would be interesting mentioning Vizquel going to the All-Star game, Jerry. How Mike Hargrove is greeted by the crowd tonight because, of course, Vizquel made the team at the expense of Nomar garcia Parra. Well, Red Sox fans not happy because Nomar was not on the team. Also, that Pedro Martinez did not start the ball game. But uh, Mike Hargrove, uh, as we mentioned before the All-Star game, also always has difficult choices to make, and uh, somebody's going to be upset. And in this case, it was the uh, Nomar fans that were upset that he was not on the ball club. You can't blame Hargrove, though, for the guys that he took. They're all terrific shortstops. Here's the Indians' designated hitter, David Justice. Last ball from Pedro misses at the knees. 25 for Justice, 12 round trippers, and 52 runs batted in. Justice got off to a quick start this year for the Indians, but has cooled. Cleveland is 3-3 three three since the break. All home games at the Jake. Jacobs Field in Cleveland split a four-game series with the Twins and divided two games against the Yankees. Been a struggle recently for Justice, though, for his last 12. Those games, uh, most of them against the New York Yankees. 3-0 and in for a called strike. Justice lines it foul, and that'll run the count full. 3-2. and two. It was a time a couple of years ago that the Indians really dominated the Red Sox, winning 11 of 12 meetings one year. Last year, though, the Sox captured the season series, seven games to six. And as mentioned, they lead this time around five games to one. Pay off pitch here from Pedro. Little looper in back of second base. Nomar Garcia Parr is there to make the catch. It's a one, two, three. Top half the first inning. The Indian score is with the Red Sox coming up. Martinez in the top of the first. Now it's the Red Sox turn back here on home turf. Jimmy Williams lineup has Darren Lewis as usual leading off playing center field tonight. Darren Bragg returns in right. He's hitting number two. Followed by Nomar Garcia Parra in the number three slot. Bo Vaughn bats cleanup at first base. Roy O'Leary patrols left field. It's John Valentin getting the call tonight at third base. Scott Hatterberg behind the plate. Mike Benjamin at second base. And Midre Cummings will be the DH and he will bat number nine. Cleveland Indians are third in the league in defense. 58 errors in 91 games. Tonight, Travis Fryman will be at third base. Omar Vizquel, the shortstop. David Bell at second, and Jeff Branson at first. Left to right, Brian Giles, Kenny Lofton, and Manny Ramirez. 
Sandy Alomar behind the plate, and on the mound, Bartolo Colon, who leads the league in ERA with a 2.56. You see his uh, win-loss, 9-4 and four on the season. Colon also is uh, third in the league in opponent's batting average against at 223, and is ninth in the league in strikeouts with the 101. He's faced the Red Sox a couple of times this year. He is 0-1, a total of 10 and two-thirds innings, 15 hits for the Red Sox against Colon, and seven earned runs. But he is really one of the reasons why the Indians feel that they're going to be very tough in postseason play with Jared Wright and the hot-throwing Bartolo Colon. Good fastball. Colon is riding a five-game winning streak as he takes to the mound here at Fenway Park tonight. Red Sox sending up Darren Lewis, Darren Bragg, and Omar Garcia Parra here in the home half the first. Lewis checking in with a 281 average, four homers and 38 runs batted in. All strike, says Terry Kraft. Lewis with four hits in 24 trips on the uh, road trip to Baltimore and Tampa Bay. Alone working fast, quickly ahead of Lewis, two strikes. Sox glad to be home, albeit brief. One and five on the trip, dropping all four games to the Orioles at Camden Yards and then getting a split. Down the Tropicana Field against the Devil Rays. It's a ball and two strikes now on Lewis. Injuries piling up for the Sox, too. Reggie Jefferson placed on the 15-day disabled list prior to the ball game. The Sox activating Keith Mitchell to take his place on the roster. Lewis fouls it off. Still a ball and two strikes. It does seem strange, Bob, to see the Red Sox in their home white uniforms and have fans cheering for them. It's been the, a lot of games in the road and certainly a lot more to come until about the middle of August. Sox have these two here, and then it's right back on the road again to Detroit and Cleveland. A quick four games against the Blue Jays later this month here at Fenway, and then that long West Coast swing, including a stop in Texas on the way back. Sox and Indians have identical records, 53 wins and 38 losses. In Cleveland's case, it's good enough to lead the Central Division. Cleveland leads by 11 and a half over the Twins. Sox running second to the Yankees, 15 games behind in the East. Boston and Cleveland tied for the second best record in the American League behind the Yankees. Two-two pitch here from Cologne, misses outside. It's a full count. Field shading Lewis to right. Payoff pitch from Colon. Line drive, base hit, right center field. And he lofted in over to pick it up, and Lewis leaves the ball game with a single for the Red Sox. Well, that's a heck of a leadoff at bat uh, for Darren Lewis. He made Colon through a lot of pitches, ran the count to three and two, and then picks up the line drive base hit. Uh, hopefully, being back in those white uniforms and here at Fenway Park, we told you the team batting average over 300 here at Fenway can get the bats going for the next couple of games. Jeff Branson holding with uh, Lewis at first base. Again, Jim Tomey, who was in the original starting lineup, scratched tonight by the Indians. He was hit by a pitch last night by Andy Pettit. He thought he might be all right, but uh, could have given him at least another day off. Aaron Bragg, meanwhile, returns for the Red Sox. Suffered a slight uh, strain in his groin, throwing out Wade Boggs at the plate the other night down in Tampa. That out yesterday's game. Jimmy says, Jimmy Williams says mostly as a precaution because, you know, the day game after the night game and the fact they're playing on turf. Well, Bragg is back in the lineup for the Red Sox. Bragg had a fairly decent trip. Seven hits and 17 trips, including a home run. Fastball, big cut, one ball, one strike. You correct that count, it's nothing in two. Center field scoreboard is out here at Fenway Park, and I have all the heat apparently. We've had some power difficulties in the area. 
We've been battling it, I know, down in our nest and truck down the right field line. 87 degrees here at game time tonight. Fastball is wide, one and two. I don't know about you, but this feels cool to me compared to uh, down in Florida. I guess we sort of get conditioned to it. The humidity is certainly high here, but it seems like it's four times higher down in Florida than it is here. Lewis held by Branson over at first. Strike three call. Cologne grabs the outside corner for his first strike out of the night. Uh, Cologne will basically go with three pitches. The fastball, which is very hard. The slider that he'll strike Bragg out here. And also the changeup. Picks up the outside corner with that pitch to pick up his first strikeout. we got two pitches in this game tonight that uh, have really gone well this season. Martinez and Cologne. This is not one you dream about if you're a hitter for either ball club. And nice to be back to Fenway, but look who's on the mound for the opposition. Here's Nomar Garcia Parra, 314 on the year, 13 homers, 58 runs batted in. Round ball to third. Ryman goes down to second for one, back to first, safe at first base. Garcia Parra just beat the relay there from David Bell. See, sometimes the difference in a close play is the fact that the second baseman has to back off the bag instead of going to greet the ball across the bag. If he could come across the bag, it shortens up the distance. But here he has to back off, not sure where the throw's going to be, and that's the difference at first base. Lewis doing his job by going in, trying to break up the double play. Now we're interested in what kind of reaction Bo Vaughn would get tonight when he was introduced to the crowd, and it's a mixed reaction here at Fenway Park. First time Bo has appeared back here at Fenway since the news of his contract flap became public during the All-Star break. On batting here with Garcia Parr at first base and one out. Rounds it quickly to David Bell over to Branson at first and that'll retire the side. No runs, one hit, one left. We're scoreless after one. For 27 years, I've been peanuts, see? To my pal Tony says, this course light, they force fluid, right? It's icy cold. So I says, I thought everyone drinks it because of all the peanuts I toss. See, I could hit a guy eight rows up just by hearing the sound of his voice. It was my thing. But with course light, I don't need a thing. Ow. Except maybe a towel. Course light! The more power, the quicker the flash, the brighter the smiles. The more power, the more music to enjoy. Introducing the remarkable power of new Duracell Ultra with a concentrated power force to get more life out of your high-tech devices. The more power, the longer the call, the more expressive the conversation. New Duracell Ultra. More power, more life. Right now, Dodge Ram is running up some very impressive numbers. Numbers like 4x4 and low $294 a month lease. Or how about these impressive numbers? 4x4, low 1.9% financing. Either way, you get a Dodge Ram 4x4 with Magnum Power, Air, Cassette Stereo, and more. But these impressive numbers won't be around forever, which means neither will this impressive number. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. Back at Fenway, no score after one. The Indians and the Red Sox. Let's take a look at the RBI leaders in the American League and National League. Brought to you by New England Ford dealers. Gonzalez has been stuck on 101 for a while. Ken Griffey with 87. Albert Bell, who's been on fire, now with 81. Manny Ramirez will be leading off this inning with 77. And Alex Rodriguez, 75. In the National League, McGuire with 91. Sosa, 86. Castilla, Bichette, and Vaughn, the top five in the National League. Sort of interesting. Bell heating up. Frank Thomas heating up as well. I saw that score. We we're running our Nesson scores at uh, 40 past the hour. 9-1 to one in favor of the White Sox over the uh, Toronto Blue Jays in the first of a doubleheader tonight. Bell has been on fire. Thomas has started to hit better, so who knows? Here's Manny Ramirez leading off of the try, followed by Brian Giles and Travis Fryman. Top of the second inning. Scored this ball game. Sox and Indians from Fenway Park. 
Tommy was the original cleanup hitter in Mike Hargrove's uh, first lineup uh, with uh, Tommy's sideline. Manny Ramirez moving into the cleanup hitter's role. Breaking ball from Martinez down and away. One ball, one strike. Red Sox uh, infield straight away for Ramirez, but the outfield shades him toward right field. Darren Lewis to the right side of second base. 1-1 one, one from Pedro. Line drive, base hit, right center field. Over to pick it up is Darren Bragg. It's a leadoff single for Ramirez. Guess we're going to have to update Bell's totals, I'm told. He has gone deep in that game wow. against Toronto. Boy, so. he is really hot. Well, you figured somebody was going to pay the second half of the season between Thomas and Bell. They struggled in the first half, and uh, they're two good players to struggle for a long time. Brian Giles, the left fielder. Giles just returning from the disabled list on the 8th of July, right after, right before the All-Star game. Time called by plate umpire Terry Kraft. Giles was injured uh, May the 30th. He crashed into the left field wall and suffered a second-degree sprain of his left ankle. And he's in 533 since returning from the disabled list. 8 for 15. Disabled the entire month of June. Martinez misses with his first offering to Giles. One ball, no strikes. Ramirez aboard with a leadoff single. One on and miss. One ball, one strike. Cleveland has an outstanding offensive team. You could toss out batting average, although the Indians are hitting 280 as a club fourth in the American League. They're third in run scored. That's the big statistic you want to look at behind Texas and the Yankees. Indians are third in steals, so they have a little bit of a little bit of speed to go with some power. I mentioned in previous meetings with Cleveland, they can hurt you really from top to bottom in the order. It's a little easier if you want to use that word. It's probably not a good one to use, referring to the Cleveland lineup, but a little easier with Tommy out of a lineup tonight. Thought he had him there for a second. Manny Ramirez just getting back in ahead of the throw from Pedro Martinez. Well, he must have just barely grabbed the outside part of the bag. He looked like he had a step toward second base. And that's a heck of a way to get back to first. He did grab the outside part and got away from that tag by Mo Vaughn. Looked like he was going on that pitch, too, didn't it, Bob? To have yeah. one step toward second base. I'll tell you one thing. Both pitches in this game, Cologne and Martinez, throw seeds to first base on pickoff attempts. Matchup of right-handers from the Dominican denied. Three balls and a strike. Giles had six home runs in his first 13 games this year and has had five now in his last 41. So he got off to a real power surge to start the year out on the West Coast in that first home stand at the Jake. Cleveland started the year this year six wins in their first six games. Indians three times this year have put together six game winning streaks. They have led the Central since opening night on March the 31st. They have dominated that division since it was formed back in 1980, 1994. Giles with a fly ball left center field. Aaron Lewis is there to make the catch for the first out of the inning, and then we'll send Manny Ramirez back to first base. Well, it's one of those Fenway nights, you know, hot, humid, the wind blowing out towards center field, out toward that left field wall, and uh, certainly anything goes up towards left field, you've got to watch closely. That ball certainly not hit hard enough to get off the wall, but uh, it's one of those typical midsummer Fenway hot nights. <laughs> That pitches uh, through the years have not liked very much. Although you got two pretty good pitchers going in this one, so it'll be interesting. Here's Travis Fryman playing on a winning ball club this year with the Indians after all those years. The struggling Detroit teams, 274 in the year. 17 homers and 61 runs batted in.
Very tough start for Fryman. Only 188 in April. But since that time, hitting over 300. He's, He's having a year this year like John Valentin had a year ago. Remember that? And John got off to the real slow start in April, but the rest of the year, he was over 300 the rest of the season. Ryman, as you remember, broke in with the Tigers. He was an everyday shortstop. They shifted into the third. He did a great job there. Wound up going to Arizona and then being traded to Cleveland in a uh, trade for Williams. Matt Williams going home to the Phoenix area. Matt Williams replaced at third base this year by Travis Fryman. Vaughn has about as tough a duty tonight with Martinez on the mound as Hatterberg behind the plate. Blows the fastball by him, one and two. Pedro clowning around for some of our camera shots yesterday down in Florida, but uh, game face on tonight for Martinez. And Manny Romero is getting a lot of attention at first base for a guy that has four stolen bases. Guess what uh, Pedro's telling him, you're not going to surprise me and pick up number five tonight. On with the backhanded play, keeps it out of right field. Strike three call. Pedro with his second strikeout of the night. Well, I don't have a reading on that fastball, but it certainly sounded hard as it hit the mid of uh, Scott Hatterberg. And right on the corner. The catcher, Pedro, at least in the early going, uh, making the pitch as he wants to. The changeup has been down. The fastball has been on the corner. Ryman disposed of via the strikeout. Here's Sandy Alomar, Jr., the Indians catcher. Fastball missing away. One ball, no strikes. Alomar named to his sixth all-star team by his manager Mike Hargrove. That's the most in Indians history for a catcher. Sandy at 265, five homers, 32 runs batted in. Little number down the third baseline. This is going to be big trouble for the Red Sox. And infield single for Alomar just dies in the Fenway grass. Ramirez finally gets to second base, two on, two out. That's the thing of beauty for Alomar because you know as soon as you make contact, it's going to be a base hit. Valentin playing well behind the bag, almost uh, like a perfect bunt down the third baseline, and Alomar knows nobody can throw him out from Number there. 11, the first baseman, you take him any Jim way you can get him, Brinson. especially against like pitches uh, like Martinez and Colon. Jeff Branson filling in tonight for Jim Tomey at first base, 205 on the year, no homers and four runs batted in. Branson acquired last July 31st on the trading deadline, along with John Smiley, who spent a lot of time on the DL since last year, coming over from the Cincinnati Reds, making just his third appearance this year at first base. Martinez goes right after him with a fastball, one strike. There's two. See if he continues to go up the ladder against Branson with the fastball. Shoots one outside. One ball, two strikes. Base runners, Ramirez in second, Alomar aboard at first with two outs. Scoreless ball game here, top of the second. Branson makes contact, still has life at the plate. 
Home of the All-Star Game, 1999. Third time that the Midsummer Classic will come to Fenway Park. There was a 1946 game where Ted Williams hit the two homers, knocked in five runs. The 1961 game that was called after nine. 1-1 tie because of the rain in the 99 game. We'll also be here at Fenway. They had quite a shindig this afternoon at the Diamond Club. Mayor Menino was here to give a nice speech. Dr. Budick from the American League. Actually, I think it looks pretty nice up on the wall, and I guess it's supposed to keep it there the remainder of this season through the All-Star game next year and all well, the 1999 season, and they've done a little painting on top of the Red Sox dugout. Looks nice. 2-2 pitch fouled. Now I know what you were doing, Bob, all that time you were off for the All-Star break. I was busy, Jerry. Putting up that logo and painting the dugouts. You know how hard they work us at Nesson. There's no days off. <laughs> Did a pretty good job, didn't I? Little smudge. I, I know where some of the smudges are, but I'm not going to tell. That is a good-looking logo. Branson again fouls it off. Still two balls, two strikes. Sox will be seeing a bit of the Indians the next couple of weeks. These two at Fenway, and the Sox have a day-night doubleheader. Split doubleheader next Tuesday in Cleveland and a night game next Wednesday in Cleveland. Strike three call. Martinez gets the outside corner. Branson is rung up. Three strikeouts on the night for Pedro. And we're scoreless after one and a half. You know his mark. You've heard his name. Zorro. 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 On July 17th. Kill him! Experience what critics are calling a true epic adventure. It's the most fun you'll have at the movies this summer. It's only one man. It's just one man. It's Zorro. Antonio Banderas. Anthony Hopkins. The Mask of Zorro. Rated PG-13. Opens everywhere Friday. Hole 9 of the Cooper Tire Invitational. A short car 3000 teeing off from D.C. There's water to the right and a very tough pin placement deep in Maine. Quick recap. Our leader, nice layup. Then a great four iron here in Manhattan, and this tough shot over the giant green monster. Bill? Thanks, Jim. Let's listen in. Nice call on these Cooper tires. Good grip. Back to you, Jim. A quick peek to the back nine. Hole 10 starts off in Belgium. The world is your course. Drive on. Hey, hey, another day with me, Mike. Hey, there you are, buddy. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, cousin, Dave, I got a great idea for a new chicken sandwich. Not that one with jelly beans. No, no, no. This one has a Wendy's whole breast fillet, a slice of Monterey Jack, and some creamy ranch dressing. Why don't we add bacon and call it a Wendy's Monterey Ranch chicken sandwich? Now you're talking, buddy. <laughs> that sounds delicious. And we brought it back two weeks ago. Come in for a delicious Monterey Ranch chicken sandwich. I knew this would be good. <laughs> Me too. Back at Fenway, bottom of the second, no score. Indians and Red Sox. American League East rivals, the Toronto Blue Jays will be at Fenway to take on the Red Sox July 23rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th. Come on out to Fenway to catch a game for tickets called 617-482-4-SOX. Yeah, Blue Jays, one of the rivals for the wild card. If you're looking ahead to that in the American League, the standings there coming into tonight. The Red Sox leading Texas by two and a half and Toronto by seven and a half. Blue Jays are even 500 on the year, 47-47. They've got a doubleheader tonight at Comiskey Park the Red Sox, against the White Sox. And as mentioned, they were down big in game one, 9-1. to one. Troy Score is here, Red Sox and Indians. As Troy O'Leary leads off the home half to second, John Valentin, Scott Hatterberg to follow. 285 for Troy, 14 homers, 48 runs batted in. One ball, no strikes. Tough road trip for O'Leary, only two for 21 on that trip after the All-Star break. Could have that big hit in the eighth inning on Monday to give the Red Sox a little breathing room. It was 1-0 at the time. Dropped a single into left field to score the run to give them a 2-0 lead. And that proved to be the final score. Two balls and a strike. Fly ball left field. Ryan Giles there for the Tribe. Puts it away. One out. 
Well, Cologne tonight trying to tie Dave Berba for the team lead in wins. He has Very 10, does Berba, Cologne 9. 13, Jarrett Wright also has 9 wins. The uh, top three starting Bellingham. pitches in this rotation for the Indians. Cleveland second in the league in ERA, 3.91 behind the Yankees, just ahead of Minnesota, and then the Red Sox. John Valentin steps in for the Sox, so the Indians are way up there in terms of scoring runs and way up there in terms of preventing runs. They really like their pitching staff, anchored by the two young right-handers. Right, of course, blossomed last year for the postseason. Cologne did not play in the postseason for the Indians. He has uh, come on this year. He had five trips back and forth last year between Cleveland and Buffalo in AAA. He's got two kind of fastballs, too. That the cross-seam fastball, which is straight, the two-seamer, that'll sail back in on right hand, is like he did there to Valentin. And they're both hard. 3-0 pitch, grounded through the left side of the infield into left field for a base hit. Second hit of the night for the Sox. Valentin checks in at first base with one out. Well, that's one way to get hit is going. You know, you get the count 3-0, and oh, and most of the time you'll put the take sign on, make them throw a strike. But uh, when an offense is struggling, sometimes the manager would prefer they be aggressive and let them swing on 3-0 counts. Pays off that time as Valentin picks up the base hit. Breaks an 0 for 11 for John. Well, Valentin aboard with one out. Here's Scott Hatterberg. Hatterberg had a home run off of Cologne back in April. Got 273 on the year. One of those eight home runs coming at Jacobs Field in Cleveland on April the 25th in a 3-2 Red Sox win over Cologne. Cologne was also no decision April the 20th here at Fenway. He's had good luck against Cologne, six for nine with a couple of home runs. Cologne out of the Dominican Republic, 23 years of age, six feet, 185 pounds. Well, certainly Hatterberg didn't like that call, but he hopes uh, Martinez will get that. <laughs> Not bad numbers against pretty good pitcher. Oh, four extra base hits. Alone will win this battle, though, as Hatterberg goes down on strikes. That's one as you're walking back to the dugout, you say, well, that call, that second that strike eight. call, kill me in that at bat. Got a fastball there, challenge the time. Baseman, and swings right through the fastball. Second strike out for Cologne, one on a slider, one on a fastball. Two outs for the Red Sox here in the second inning. Mike Benjamin at 312 on the year. All the playing time Benjamin's had still has the average over 300. One homer and 27 runs batted in. Cologne's first major league win came over the Red Sox right here at Fenway Park last June the 7th. Mentioned he bounced back and forth between Cleveland and Buffalo. He made his major league debut last April, April of 97 in Anaheim. He was no decision there. And then in his second major league start, he lasted only two-thirds of an inning at Seattle and threw 61 pitches prior to being demoted for the first time. He was back and forth. They wanted to give him a full year at AAA, but because of all the injuries to the major league staff, they really could not afford to do so. Obviously, he is ready this year. Nine and four, 2.56 ERA coming in. Five complete games and a pair of shutouts. Benjamin fouls it back, and the count is even now at two and two. Corona is shut out Anaheim, 11 nothing on a four hitter. That was the first week of the season on the West Coast. Also tossed a four-hit shutout against Pittsburgh on June the 8th. Five complete games. More than the Indians had as an entire staff last year.
Allington goes on the 3-2 pitch, which is down low for ball four. So the Sox have a pair on with two outs. And the number nine hitter, the DH, beat Ray Cummings coming up. Dre Cummings had those two home runs early this year against Detroit. Has really scuffled for playing time since then, but is starting to get some now and will get some now, especially with Reggie Jefferson sideline. So Cummings has been waiting for the opportunity and is now here. 250 on the year, a couple of homers, and nine runs batted in. He is hitting ninth in Jimmy Williams' lineup, but he is the DH. That is something you don't really, excuse me, see DH is very often hitting in that nine spot in the batting order. Up at a key spot here, though. Two on, two outs. Jefferson bothered by the sore back if you just joined us on the DL for the next 15 days. Hard heat that time from Cologne, and Cummings can't catch up. The last time he pitched here at Fenway, we had him clocked a number of times at 96, 97 miles an hour with the fastball. It's like he's that or more tonight, and being matched by Pedro Martinez. This is inside. Count is even on Midre, a ball and a strike. Keith Mitchell, newest member of the Red Sox, called up from Pawtucket. He takes uh, Reggie Jefferson's place on the 25-man roster. He is the second cousin of Kevin Mitchell. You remember him. <laughs> Keith has big league time with Cincinnati, also with the Braves in Seattle. Three balls and a strike. Key situation here. Hitters count for Midre Cummings. Two on, two out. And he often has to come in on this one. He'll make the catch, and that will retire the side. Sox threatened but failed to score. No runs, one hit. They strand. Nesson tonight after the coverage of Red Sox baseball. For Fox Sports News, you'll get scores, highlights, and analysis from everything in sports today. That's Fox Sports News after the game, live on Nesson. Here come the Indians, top of the third inning of this scoreless ball game. Number nine hitter for the Tribe, the second baseman David Bell. Then back to the top of the order, Kenny Lofton and Omar Vizquel. Buddy Sun, 270 on the year, seven homers, 27 runs batted in. And he's making a 68 start tonight at second base. Remember early in the year it was Sean Dunstan that was uh, playing second base. Bell kind of took that position over. Offline drive, Bond snares it. Hung in the air long enough, Bond over, able to hustle over and make the catch, one out. Now those at times can be very tough to judge because it's right toward the end of the bat. And you think it's hit hard, but it's not really hit that hard, and Vaughn has to time his lead perfectly. I think that was going to probably land in foul territory, but uh, Vaughn gets the first out. The center fielder, Kenny Lofton. One gone for the Tribe here in the third. Top of the order, Kenny Lofton. Back home in Cleveland after that year in Atlanta. Lofton after the first pitch, rolls it to second base, Benjamin Devon. So far, a quick inning for Pedro Martinez. Two quick outs. Happens a lot, doesn't it? After you strike out that first time up, that second at bat, you swing at the first pitch. You don't want to get to two strikes. Lofton with 28 steals is uh, third in the league behind Henderson and Shannon Stewart of Toronto. Henderson with 38 has the lead. Omar Vizquel at the plate looks at ball one. 94 career-wise against the Red Sox with a couple of home runs. You don't necessarily think of home runs when you see Vizquel. You certainly think defense. Fly ball here to right field. Bragg is over to make the catch. One, two, three, top of the third. No runs. 
through four Sox. Artola Camon all set to face the Red Sox here in the third inning. He's from the Dominican Republic, cooling himself off of the dugout between innings. It shouldn't be that hot here. He should be used to this. He's all set to go again, though, as Darren Lewis at the top of the order coming up for the Sox here in the home half, the third. Lewis Bragg and Garcia Parra. Strike one to Lewis, who had a single to center back in the first inning. Five for 25 now for Darren Lewis. Second half of the year. Yankees in Detroit tonight. Detroit will be the next stop for the Red Sox. Lewis ground ball right side. Covering is Cologne to get the throw from the second baseman David Bell one out. I think that might be one of the most difficult plays uh, for a first baseman who's not played there a lot. You have a tendency to want to chase every ground ball and that time Branson Number way off is his uh, position. Right but it's right there for the second Aaron baseman Bell and Cologne does his job by covering first getting his foot out of the way of the runner and getting the out. Branson making just his third appearance at first base this year. Well, with Tony sideline, he's in there. Our pitching duel is living up to its advanced billing. Martinez and Cologne. And Bragg looks at strike one. Bragg was called out on strikes his first trip. Bragg made a minor adjustment in his stance, and he's been hitting the ball better since. His front foot is opened up more toward the pitcher instead of closed. And it looks like he's a little freer in his swing. And Jimmy Williams was talking about that. He started a few games back. You see that front foot kind of pointing, not directly at the pitcher, but opened up just a bit. Foul fly down the left field line, a ball and two strikes. Before having to sit out with that groin injury, it uh, hit in five or six games at a 455 clip. Ten hits in 22 trips. Line foul. Look at in the seat. Still a ball and two strikes. Cleveland manager since 1991. Mike Hargrove has been since he replaced John McNamara in the Indians dugout. Well, he's done a great job with this team too. They've had a lot of stars here and uh, continues to get the best out of them. Has some strong personalities, particularly on past teams. Indians, of course, came within the, the whisker of winning it all last year. 588 wins in his eighth major league season. Al Clark doesn't move at third base. And down on strikes goes uh, Darren Bragg. That looked like Terry Kraft pointed at the ball and the bat and uh, made the call himself. Looked like a slider again outside. That's what he got him on last time up. And there's Kraft pointing right at Bragg and saying, you're out. I don't have to ask for help. You know you went. Just waiting, uh, hopefully, that the umpire would miss the call, maybe. <laughs> Not so. Four strikeouts now for Cologne. Base is empty. Two outs. Here's Nomar. Takes one up high. One ball, no strikes. Indians came within a whisker of winning it all last year. They couldn't hold the lead. Late in the ball game, Florida Marlins winning it in the seventh game of the World Series. Look at Mike Hegan, one of the Cleveland broadcasters outside the uh, broadcast booth here. He's saying, you know, they an interesting year in Cleveland, but they're they're looking obviously forward to postseason play. They've been there so often. They have a, a big 11 and a half game lead over the Twins. They've not been threatened in the Central. They will not be threatened in the Central. They've led wire to wire. They're the only champions the Central Division has ever had. They won it in 95, again uh, 96, repeated last year, and will win it again this year. No, the Yankees certainly give them a hard time, don't they? And they were saying that that's one of the reasons that maybe the Indians would go after a guy like Randy Johnson because it certainly would help in a series against New York. This one hit well by Nomar to right field. Back, Ramirez. 
is to make it over the shoulder catch on the warning track. And that'll retire beside. One, two, three again go the Sox, although no bar. Gave it a ride. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. Three completed Fenway, still scoreless. Pretty good ball game going here tonight at Fenway. Indians and Red Sox scored this as we move to the top of the fourth. Big double header coming your way tomorrow. Tim Wakefield pitches to the Red Sox tomorrow night in the first of two here on Nesson at 7 o'clock against the Tribe. That's followed by Fox Thursday night baseball, Tampa Bay and Anaheim. Immediately following the Red Sox and Indians tomorrow night here on Nesson. Two for the price of one tomorrow night. Goldest ball game, David Justice steps in here against Pedro Martinez, goes after the first pitch, rounds to Mo Vaughn at first base. Mo wins the race to the bag. Manny Ramirez at times has been criticized for his outfield play, but you'd never know it by this play. Got an excellent jump on the ball. Nomar heard it way down that right field line, but Ramirez takes it right in front of the wall and takes extra bases away from Garcia Parra. He really got a good jump on that ball for a while. It looked like he was running too close to the foul line. But then regrouped and uh, made the play. One out in the Cleveland fourth, and here is Ramirez. How many times the guy that made the great play hit second in the inning? <laughs> One time every nine times. <laughs> would be the average, I would guess. Breaking ball wide, one ball, one strike on Ramirez, selecting the American League All-Star team by his manager Mike Cargro. Bernie Williams unable to play, and Rover tapping Ramirez. And ball, two strikes. Good breaking ball there by uh, Martinez. That's a jelly leg breaking ball. Throws it directly at Ramirez. You see the flinch and then the strike. With Pedro comes back with here one two making ball down and away the count is even now two balls two strikes no runs two hits for the Indians no runs two hits for the Red Sox we're in the top of the fourth three strikeouts for Pedro four strikeouts for Bartolo Colon Pedro's total now matches Cologne as he blows the fastball by Ramirez. We go to our Nesson Studios and check in with Bob Rogers. Bob? Bob, Dave Steve making his first Major League start since 1993 in the back end of a doubleheader for the Blue Jays. The White Sox won game one, 9-3, with help from Albert Bell's 26th home run. This RBI double by Jose Canseco, though, gives Toronto the one nothing lead. The Blue Jays, by the way, eight games behind the Red Sox in the wild card race. And back here at Fenway Park, Brian Giles stepping in here for the Indians. And Giles swings and misses. One strike to count. Dave Steve, first start in five years. His comeback so far has gone pretty well. Wasn't taken too seriously at first. Went to Syracuse, pitched very well. Jays called him up, pitched well in relief, and now is being rewarded with a start tonight in Chicago. Against a hot-hitting White Sox club. That's a strike, two and two. Indians were out looking for pitching help in the past or various trades. Giles was a name that always came up, and John Hart held on to him. The left fielder now down on strikes here. One, two, three. Go the Indians in the top of the fourth. Three and a half. Played here at Fenway Park. Sox and Tribes scored us. Two and a half singles. Both clubs have two hits, and both clubs scored us here as we move to the fourth. Pedro Martinez, Bartolo Colon, Mo Vaughn leads off. Roy O'Leary, John Valentin to follow. Well, I think Mo expected to hear some uh, boos coming back to Fenway after rejecting the latest off for the Red Sox, and he's got a few here tonight. Didn't seem as bad this time around as uh, the first time he was announced. Round to second, his first at bat goes after the first pitch from Colon here in the fourth and fouls it back on the screen.
Oh, trying to get permission from the umpire to maybe go back and get some pine tar on that bat. You just can't walk from the batter's box to the on-deck circle and do it. You have to... Actually, you're not allowed to do that unless you have permission from the umpire, and that's what Mo did. Permission granted, mission accomplished, and back to work. Bob Rogers also tracking uh, all of the Mark McGuire bats tonight for St. Louis. McGuire actually took last night off. He did come into the game late as a pinch hitter and ground it out, but uh, sat out last night in a ball game at St. Louis. Well, he and manager Tony La Russa feeling it would be good for McGuire to have the night off. Going down on strikes as Colon racks up number four. Well, it's pretty much what hit is expected in this one. You've got two guys that have been uh, pitching great all season who are on top of their game here number tonight. Three, that fastball up and away from Vaughn with two strikes. Troy O'Leary. Four strikeouts now for Cologne. And five for Martinez. All-star pitching duel here at Fenway. Here's Troy O'Leary, and O'Leary looks at a called strike. You see, when they make pitches like that, when they're hitting the corners, it's not fair. And they've been hitting corners tonight. Field made to Al Clark at the third base. Two strikes. O'Leary finds himself in a hole. More so with Cologne on the mound. hit center field. There he falls behind on the count, hangs in there and delivers a one-out base knock. Third hit for the Red Sox tonight. Well, guys back-to-back -back have, have to get going. O'Leary and uh, Valentin both have struggled recently, although Valentin uh, swung the bat well in Baltimore. Pretty good pitch that O'Leary hit there. The breaking ball was down, but he'll golf it in the center field for the base hit. And then Valentin had his struggles again as we headed to Tampa Bay. Every time it looks like he's going to make a move on that batting average, he has a stretch of two or three games where he doesn't get a hit. Broken 0 for 11 skid with that single you mentioned back in the second inning. Fox trying to put something back to back. O'Leary and Valentin here in the fourth. The other thing, Bob, with these two pitches, you know, when you get guys on the mound that don't give up a lot of hits, you like to try to play hit and run, steal bases. But they're both tough to do that against. The strikeout pitches, and a lot of times you don't make contact. Those are tough guys to put plays on with. Valentin and the hitter's count here. Here's the 2-0 pitch. A nasty one, knee high. Outside corner, 2-1. Alone over his last eight starts has won six, lost one, throwing three complete games, and has an ERA of under two, 1.88. You mentioned he's working on a five-game winning streak. He's pitched into the eighth inning in six of his last eight outings, so generally he's around for a while. But here, Ballantin, line drive, base hit, right field. O'Leary will stop at second base. Ramirez, a very strong throwing arm in right. Fox have two on with one out. Now, Valentin taking what uh, Cologne will give him, a fastball away, and just shoots it in that gap between first and second. You see a little hesitation Number by O'Leary to make sure the second baseman didn't catch the ball, Scott and because of that, he has to hold up at second base. Now, interesting situation here for the Sox. O'Leary at second, Valentin aboard at first with one out, and a guy at the plate, Scott Hatterberg, who has good career numbers against Cologne, although went down swinging his first trip. Scott has struggled all season long with runners in scoring position. Battling Cologne here. Up pitch again outside corner. Well, there's that uh, two-seam fastball, the one he turns over and hoping for a ground ball if the hitter makes contact.
Fly ball left field. Ryan Giles makes the catch for the second out of the inning, and we'll head down to our Nesson Studios and check in with Bob Rogers. Bob? Well, Bob, with that loss in game one, the Blue Jays have fallen under 500 for the first time since June 23rd. We said Dave Steve back as a starter for the first time since 1993. Albert Bell hits this one back to 1993. He, he now has nine home runs in his last eight games. It's 2-1 Chicago in the second. Boy, he's something else, huh? He had a home run in game one, another home run in game two. Maybe somebody now will be more likely to take his salary than uh, a month ago. Boy, well, yeah, saw Steve make a mistake with the breaking ball, and Bell made him pay, didn't he? Mike Benjamin hits with two on, two outs. Smoke to third. Nice play by Fryman across the diamond to Branson in time to end the inning. No runs, two hits. Sox strand a pair. We played four at Fenway tonight. Matched up against tonight, uh, fellow countryman Bartolo Colon. Game that has been all that it's been advertised to be. Travis Fryman, Sandy Alomar, and Jeff Branson coming up here for the Indians. Pedro Martinez, an economy of pitches so far, just 50 used for the first four innings. One ball, no strikes now on Travis Fryman. Called out on strikes back in the first. Martinez has struck out five tonight. He has not walked the batter. Indians are the second best road team in the American League. Only the Yankees have a better mark. Cleveland 27 and 17 on the road. Actually have a better road record than they do at home at Jacobs Field. Where they have sold out... Uh, 252 games and counting in a row. Yep, sold out for the rest of the season. Field made to the first base umpire, Jim McKean. Three balls and a strike. Or correct the count at two and two now. At the left-hand corner of your screen. Foul tip, Hatterberg can't hold on. Still two balls, two strikes. Ryman <laughs> down on strikes for the second time tonight. That's a half dozen for Pedro. Well, halfway to the point he had the last time he faced the Indians, he had 12. Upstairs, uh, they like to do that to Fryman when they get ahead of him, especially if you have a good hard fastball. And that is the uh, 78th time Fryman has struck out this season. He pretty much consistently goes over that 100 mark, but does provide the power and drives in runs. Sandy Alomar makes contact, rolls it off the end of the bat and over towards the box seats. One strike to count. Six-time All-Star. MVP of the All-Star Game a year ago, a couple years ago, Jacobs Field. Fly ball, center field. Lewis there to make the catch, two outs. That is something, you know, Sandy Alomar, the MVP uh, two years ago, and his brother, uh, Robbie Alomar, the MVP this season. Number 11. Some talk the they would be base. reunited, as you know. Second Jim base has been a big Brinson. problem for Cleveland. They've gone through a number of them. You were talking during David Bell's last at bat that the Earlier this year, they had Sean and Dunstan. Before that, last year, Tony Fernandez. Remember a couple years ago, they made that contract offer to Tim Nering, trying to make him a second baseman. Hey, they may have found that guy in Bell. Yeah. He's done a nice job for him. The constant in the infield has been Vizquel at short. You know, Bob, I was writing down the stats tonight, and I wrote Vizquel at shortstop on my card, and then I... Broke down one error. One error on the season at shortstop of Vizquel. I and mean, that's amazing. And it's not like he doesn't get to a lot of balls either. Oh, he gets to all of them. <laughs> or so it seems. Five straight gold gloves. But he's been the constant. They've had a cast at second base. They've had three third basemen in the last three years. Tommy and then Williams last year. Fryman this year. 
Martinez makes quick work to Branson. One, two, three, go the Indians. Four and a half played here at Fenway Park. Sox nothing, tribe nothing. Field going for Boston. Doc Gooden will pitch for the Tribe. 7 o'clock game time here on Nesson. Friday night's game you can see on Channel 68. Saturdays from Detroit on Nesson. And Sunday afternoon again at 1 o'clock with Sean and Jerry on WABU-TV Channel 68. That's the upcoming schedule for the Sox through the weekend. Meet Ray Cummings leads off for the Red Sox here in the home half, the fifth inning. A lot of zeros up on the scoreboard. He'd raise 0 for 1 tonight. Flied out to Lofton in center his first trip. Coming steps on this one. Hits it high and long. If it's fair, it's gone. It's gone. A home run for Midre Cummings. And that will break this scoreless tie. Cummings in the DH role tonight comes through big time with home run number three on the year. How dare you hit me ninth as a DH. Said it before, Bob, Mitra Cummings, one of the best fastball hitters on this Red Sox team. And he is way out in front of that pitch and drives it right down the right field line. That ball was crushed by Cummings. Red Sox have the lead. Darren Lewis follows. Base hit. Center field. Well, it's nice to see a couple of these Red Sox hitters getting well again tonight. Cummings with the home run. Lewis has two hits. Ballantin has two hits. Number 56, the right fielder, Darren Bragg. Sox hit total now is six. They about hit the Tribe six to two. They've got the big one nothing lead on the scoreboard. Here's Darren Bragg. Bragg squares, bunch drops it down the first baseline. It's a good one. Branson to the second baseman. David Bell covering, advancing Darren Lewis into scoring position. Now that gives you an idea how these managers feel about this game and the way both pitches are going in this game. Bragg getting the job done, the sacrifice down the first baseline. Now some may say, well, why don't you just steal Darren Lewis with his speed? Well, Malone gets the ball to the plate very, very quickly. Tough to steal against, and Alomar, of course, has a good throwing arm, so uh, much better percentage there to sacrifice. Bragg did the job very efficiently. One pitch, got the bunt down. So Lewis in second base for Nomar Garcia Parra, who's 0 for 2 tonight. In the dirt, one ball, no strikes. One out into the fifth inning. Bartolo Colon's pitch count is 70. Hot shot to short, and back safely at second base is Darren Lewis. Liner to Vizquel to retire Garcia Parra. And Lewis able to stay out of a double play. And just barely stay away from that double play, too. Vizquel takes a couple of steps in and catches it before he hits the ground. And they almost uh, double up Lewis. It took a while for Bell to get to the bag. The ball was hit so hard, and that's the difference in the play. Well, Lewis is second base, two outs now, and that'll leave it up to Moe. Well, I guess it won't leave it up to Mo. They're going to put Vaughn aboard with first base open and take the chances with O'Leary. Now, it makes sense for Hargrove because Vaughn, the cleanup hitter, and uh, O'Leary, who has struggled since the All-Star break. Mo and Hargrove having a little fun. As Mo smiles at Hargrove and he smiles back. Mike, so what do you expect me to pitch to you with first base open? Four straight balls, put Mo aboard, two on, two outs, and Troy O'Leary will make his way to the plate. Number 25, 
Lewis at second, Vaughn at first with two outs. Roy O'Leary hits here. He's flied to left and singled to center. Pitch is in for a called strike. Following the intentional pass to Vaughn this year, Sox are one for five. The one hit belongs to O'Leary. That was back in April. It was a big hit O'Leary had, though, after following the intentional pass to Vaughn. It came back April 15th. It was a game winner against the Oakland A's. Sox are winning all those games in their final at bat back in the month of April. Two balls and a strike. walk to Vaughn was the first free ticket issued tonight by Cologne who's fallen behind O'Leary three balls and one strike <laughs> foul back out of Fenway and that'll run it full so Lewis at second base and Vaughn at first will be off with the payoff pitch to O'Leary with Lewis that added Step trying to score from second base on a base hit as John Valentin waits his turn in the on deck circle. <laughs> Runners are in motion, 3 2 pitch, and it's fouled off by O'Leary. After a number of pitches away from O'Leary, tries to go back inside with the fastball. A lot of fastballs in this at bat to Troy. Runners go again, and O'Leary down on strikes to end the inning. That's five for Cologne. For the Red Sox, they get one on the home run by Cummings. One run, two hits, two left. one nothing Sox as we head to the sixth. This and more now available at Nesson.com, your online tickets to New England sports. Pedro Martinez now with a one nothing lead as he goes to work here against the Tribe in the sixth inning. David Bell, the number nine hitter, to lead it off. And back to the top of the order, Kenny Lofton and Omar Vizquel. And in a row, retired by Pedro and Sandy Alomar's infield single back in the second inning. Troy O'Leary, camping under this one, had to reach back to make the catch that time against Bell. One out, and we'll go to our Nesson Studios and check in with Bob Rogers. Bob? All right, Bob, the Yankees finally snapped that miserable one-game losing streak last night. The panic in the Bronx is over, and they're on... A pretty good fast start tonight. They're up 3 0. Ricky Lede, the double the other way, makes it 3 0. The Yankees up with Hideki Arabu throwing the shutout right now in the fifth. Back here, it's Pedro Martinez working on the shutout, but he just has a 1 0 lead. Indians batting in the sixth inning, top of the order here, and Kenny Lofton. Lofton has struck out and grounded to second. One ball, one strike.
Ground ball, second base. Benjamin makes the play over to move on two outs. Now that certainly helps in a one-run game. Keep Kenny Lofton off first base. He can turn those base hits into doubles in a hurry. Talks are pleased to announce that uh, right-handed closer Tom Gordon will make his online chat Number debut. 13. That'll be tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Tomorrow, July 16th at 2, Omar Tom Gordon is will be chatting with you on the Red Sox official website, www.redsox.com. Tom Gordon tomorrow at 2. Sounds like an interesting conversation. Gordon an all-star this year for the first time. So is Omar Vizquel, who fouls the bunt attempt at the plate. One strike to count. And once again, the off-speed pitch throwing off the timing. Vizquel times that bunt on a fastball, and instead he got the changeup from uh, Pedro Martinez. Now he gets the fastball from Martinez. One ball, one strike. Twelve in a row now retired by Pedro who has given up just two hits tonight. They both came back in the second inning. Martinez has racked up seven strikeouts has not walked a batter difference in the game the home run by Midray Cummings in the bottom of the fifth. Talked about one error on the season for Vizquel that error came back in uh, April in a game at Tampa Bay. I mean, that is unbelievable for a shortstop. One, One era. Past the all-star break. As Kell makes contract, rolls it to second. Benjamin Devon, one, two, three, goes to Tribe in the top of the sixth. We played five and a half here at Fenway. Pedro leading the Indi leading the Indians one nothing. Same amount of chicken this week? No. Triple it. Oh, something going on? Make sure we have lots of ranch dressing. With bacon. And how much Monterey Jack? How much you got? Now you're talking. It's back. Wendy's Monterey Ranch Chicken Sandwich. A whole breast fillet Monterey Jack and creamy ranch with bacon. It's the sandwich everybody loves. Dave, you think we have enough? You're right. Order more. Wendy's Monterey Ranch Chicken Sandwich. Come and get it. It's gone. Hello. Todd Wallace, please. Oh, this is Todd. Bill, it's Citizens Bank. It's about your home equity loan. Oh. I just applied. Is everything okay? Well, you didn't get the amount you asked for. I knew it. No, you were approved for 15000 more. Really? Citizens Bank. Quick turnaround and the not-so-typical habit of trying to give you more than you asked for. Citizens Bank. one nothing Red Sox lead as we move to the bottom of the sixth. This August 11th is Wally the Beanbag Buddy Day at Fenway Park. The first 15,000 fans, 15 and under, receive a Wally the Beanbag Buddy. Compliments of Fenway Franks. To order tickets, call 617-482-4-SOX. Red Sox baseball, what a game. And a great game to watch tonight. A one nothing Red Sox lead. John Valentin leads off the bottom of the sixth inning. Valentin followed by Hatterberg and Benjamin. Alone 82 pitches so far through the first five innings. The one by Midray Cummings left the park in the bottom of the fifth, and that's the difference tonight. And ball, no strikes on John Valentin. A pair of singles for John. Have been 0 for his last 11 coming into play tonight. And a single to left and then single to right. That's a strike, two and one. Malone came into the night leading the American League in ERA, 2.56. Second to Scott Erickson of Baltimore in complete games. Round ball, right side, backhanded here by Bell. Bell to Branson, one out. The impressive thing about Cologne, Bob, the fact that he's a strikeout pitcher, obviously, with the hard fastball, but then he turns it over and can also keep his infielders busy with the ground ball out. Number 10, the catcher, Scott. Had some Hatterberg. veteran pitchers go through the tribe the last a number of years. Remember when McDowell was with Cleveland, Oral Hershiser last year. We named two of them, but now they're building it around the youngsters, that pitching staff. Jared Wright, Bartolo Colon. And they've got a veteran that helped them this year, and Dave Berber. 
ever, but certainly not at the stage of his career where guys like Kershaw or McDowell were. But, uh, he's contributed with the 10 wins, 10 and 7 on the season. And there were some that were asking Cleveland general manager John Hart about a trade. He usually makes one about this time of year to really strengthen his ball club for the postseason. But Hart said, this year we may have made our July trade in March, referring to the trade for Burba. We've been with the Tribe all year. Slated to be Cincinnati's opening day pitcher, and they traded him right at the end of spring training. Although there are reports that uh, Randy Johnson may be dangled again. Whether or not the Tribe have interest or would match up with Seattle, but boy, Johnson would really help them in a series against the Yankees, being a strong left-hander like he is. Cle as you mentioned, Cleveland does have problems with New York. One ball, two strikes here on Scott Hatterberg. He was struck out and flied to left. Through the left side of the infield. Hatterberg has his first base hit of the night. And that's 7 for 12 now for Hatterberg in his career against uh, Cologne. Just takes that fastball, slaps it the other Number way between third and short. Red Sox now have seven hits in the ball game. Benjamin, who has been such a valuable player for the Red Sox this year. Rear highs already established. He hits doubles and RBIs as he gets a ton of playing time. Nomar went down back in May. Benjamin starting 16 straight games at shortstop, and now he's been the everyday second baseman with all the injuries there. Was sharing the spot with Lou Merloni, who's sideline. Merloni, by the way, has a deep bruise inside the knee. It was revealed in an MRI the other day. Brian Rose was waiting for some results, too, of an MRI that was taken up at the UMass Medical Center. Was hoping to hear today. That's a heck of a bruise Maloney got, huh? It lasted a long time. Half foul at the plate, a ball and two strikes. I think he hit his knee on the top at Yankee Stadium when the Red Sox were there, and has been bothering him ever since. There was some concern because they thought that by giving it the rest they gave it, that it should have been responding better than it was. But it has been revealed as a deep bruise, and hopefully Lou will be able to get back to action soon. And Jeff Fry was in the Red Sox clubhouse today looking good. Coming back from that knee operation. Round ball, right side. Bell makes the play to Branson for the second out of the inning as Hatterberg moves into scoring position at second base and will move into scoring position by going downstairs with Bob Rogers. Bob? All right, Bob, and we'll move out to Comiskey. The White Sox had a 2-1 to one lead on the Blue Jays until Mr. Canseco does it again. Not a whole lot of muscle on this one, but he does get it through into center field. It's an RBI. He has both of Toronto's RBI tonight. It's 2-2 two -two in the fourth. Game one of that doubleheader tonight in Chicago went to the White Sox 9-3. Albert Bell has homered in both ends of a doubleheader. Here's the man who has the home run for the Red Sox tonight, Midre Cummings. Homered last inning, bats here with Hatterberg at uh, first base and two outs. Hatterberg leading off a second. Cummings has three home runs this year. They've all been huge. One sunk Detroit. Actually, both of them sunk the Tiger. Two game-winning home runs against Detroit back in April. Very close together. And the home run to break the scoreless tie here tonight and give the Red Sox the 1-0 lead. Cummings, like most players, has always thirsted for playing time. Been through a couple of organizations. Pittsburgh, Cincinnati. Could get a long look from the Red Sox here with the Jefferson sideline.
Three balls and a strike. Take strike two. A lot of breaking balls in this at bat. He went to the fastball there on the 3-1 count, but notice away from uh, Cummings. The last time was inside the one he hit for the home run. Three two pitch and Cummings down on strikes and that will retire the side. No runs one hit. Hatterberg stranded at second base. Six strikeouts now for Cologne and a one nothing Red Sox lead after five and a half. Fox Sports has a long tradition of innovation. You can see that same spirit in every Fox Sports news show. End up in that hot, hot zone. Because our goal isn't to give you just a score, a highlight, or a stat. It's about trying something new, something different. It's to take you closer to the story than ever before. Let me ask you about that third down call. Got those who set the low and away? At least that's the plan. Nesson and the Bruins. On our team, education always finishes first. If there's any message out there, I think that uh, you know kids have to understand that uh, regardless of how good you are in, in athletics. Great give of the boss today. What a check by Don Sweet. You, you've got to have the, the wherewithal to stick through school and, uh, and have that to fall back on. He told me at a very young age that uh, you know, that was going to be a priority. Everyone wins when education comes first. RedSox.com, the official website of the Boston Red Sox. Follow the games pitch by pitch, chat with your favorite players, buy your tickets online, and shop at the Red Sox Cyber Store. RedSox.com. Check out media notes and post-game coverage. Review Jimmy Williams' video play of the game. And take the Cyber Sox Challenge. RedSox.com. It's a whole new ball game. Six complete. The Red Sox have the one nothing lead on the Cummings home run. Tune in tomorrow morning for Nesson Sports Desk. Bob Rogers will get you ready to start the day with a review of everything in sports from the night before. So get all the highlights, scores, and news tomorrow on Sports Desk starting at 5 a.m. on Nesson. Pretty good ball game going for you tonight here on Nesson. one nothing Red Sox lead. David Justice leading off the seventh inning for the Indians. Meet of the order for the Tribe coming up here against Pedro Martinez, David Justice, Manny Ramirez, Brian Giles. Pedro's retired the last 13 Indians since Alomar's swinging bunt back in the second inning. Pedro has limited the Tribe with two hits. They both came in the second, a single by Ramirez leading off the inning, and then with two outs, Alomar topped the ball down the third baseline that died in the infield grass between home and third, with Valentin back on his heels. Deep at third base. Those are the only two Indians to reach. Martinez ended that inning by getting Branson on a called third, and the Tribe has not been heard from since. We're talking about one of the best offensive teams in baseball. Team that has had at least one extra base hit in every game this year. They do not have one tonight. Slam foul down the right field line by Justice. Two balls, two strikes. Watching Pedro pitch in this game, he has made uh, almost no mistakes with balls up in the zone unless he's wanted to go up in the strike zone and out of the strike zone against certain hitters when he gets a couple of strikes. But the changeup and fastball have been down just about all night. Justice reaches out, protects the plate, still two and two. One run, seven hits for the Sox. No runs, two hits for the Tribe. Again, fouled off by Justice. And primarily a DH for the Indians this year. Swing and a miss. Blows 
There's the fastball by him. Eight strikeouts tonight for Pedro Martinez. Well, he's doing exactly what he wants to do. There are a couple of change-ups down in the way that Justice was able to foul off, and then Pedro right back inside and high with the fastball. Right up underneath the hands and picks up another strikeout. Number this is about as good as we've seen Pedro since back in the early part of the season. He's had some great games in between, but uh, really shot tonight. And his five-game losing streak stopped the last time out against the Orioles. Breaking ball to Ramirez, a called strike. Ramirez with that single we talked about back in the second, then went down swinging in the fourth. saying when Martinez was going through that slump when they were speculating maybe it was this maybe it was that you were saying that it was location and his location has been great tonight the one two for Martinez hit high in the air Vaughn backing up at first base Benjamin back on the outfield grass. Benjamin will make the play. Two outs. And we'll go to our Nesson Studios and check in with Bob Rogers. Bob? Well, the Yankees are really incredible. They're looking for their 67th win of the season. They just keep rolling along. Tim Raines, who was struggling with an 0 for 15 streak, snaps it with a base hit up the middle to score Paul O'Neill. It's 4 nothing now in the sixth. Back here at Fenway, a 1 nothing lead for the Red Sox. Base is empty. Two outs for the Tribe. Left fielder Brian Giles at the dish. Looks at ball one. Giles has flied to left and struck out. Hot shot, base hit, left field. The first Indian hit since the second inning. Snaps the Martinez string of 15 in a row retired Giles. With a two-out base hit here in the seventh. Now, Giles 17. really has been hot the since they're coming off of the Sabalis. He'll take Previs this Martinez fastball Freeman. to the opposite field. Again, it was a good pitch by Pedro down and away, but uh, a nice piece of hitting by Brian Giles. In the beginning of the season, it seemed like almost every hit he got was either a home run or an extra base hit. He's at first base, two outs, Travis Fryman. That one's in the dirt. Knocked around by Hatterberg, but keeps it out in front of the plate. No advancement by Giles. That ball get through Hatterberg and hit the umpire, or uh, did it hit Hatterberg? Breaking ball, and uh, I guess he got a piece of Hatterberg and just stayed around home plate. Keep that man out of scoring position with the two outs. Giles has some speed, six stolen bases. Been caught three times. Giles goes, pitches a ball. Here's the throw by Hatterberg. In time, he's out at second base. Hatterberg guns down Giles to end the seventh. Seventh inning stretch here at Fenway Park, a one nothing lead for the Sox. Sox have the one nothing lead. The Red Sox are looking to continue their winning ways in the second half of the season. Don't miss your chance to root for the Red Sox. Good seats are still available for upcoming games. Call the ticket office at 617-482-4SOX. Well, Mike Hargrove trying to get a man in the scoring position. Giles, who has good speed, but Hatterberg had the benefit of the fastball and a nice play at second base by Mike Benjamin. The throw starts to tail right back into the runner, and Benjamin able to hold on as Giles makes contact with the glove. 
Good hard fastball giving uh, Hatterbrook some time to make the throw and a nice tag nice play there by Benjamin to get the out. A lot of times you see that ball kick right out of the glove of the second baseman a shortstop not that time. Well they get Giles at second still a one nothing Red Sox lead as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning top of the order Darren Lewis. Up here against Bartolo Colon. Lewis in the air to right field Ramirez is over to make the catch one pitch one out. Malone has made only the one mistake tonight. Midre Cummings took him deep, leading off the Number fifth inning. Yeah, I wouldn't call out a mistake Number either. I mean, you know, that's a pretty good fastball, Aaron but Cummings Bray. hit the daylights out of it. That ball was hit a long way. And give the batter some credit. Well, he really did crush that to right field. Cummings' third home run of the year, a 1 0 lead for the Sox. Darren Bragg. Oh, who'd that one get the umpire? Obviously uh, there, which is unusual, Alomar getting crossed up on that pitch. Usually you see him get crossed up with a man at second base, but to this fastball, he just barely gets a glove on it and probably saved the life of the umpire. Very craft behind the plate. Ball, one strike on Bragg, 0 for 2 tonight. Called out on strikes in both the first and third innings, and then dropped down a sacrifice bun in the fifth. To center field, hit well. Lofton is back. Lofton on the warning track. Lofton makes the catch. What a play by Lofton. Tough play, too, right over his head in center field. Lofton back to take extra bases away from Bragg on the warning track. Two outs. Boy, that's a tough play, too, because that's really more of a line drive than a foul fly ball. And Lofton got a great jump on the line drive. Now, usually that's the toughest play for a center fielder. That ball directly over his head. But he's able to make the catch, close it up in the glove before he hits the wall. A terrific play by Lofton. Now they can throw some leather, can't they? It's been a terrific ball game to watch tonight. Great pitching, great fielding. Full glove center fielder. Here's Nomar 0 for 2 tonight, 0 for 3 tonight. Fielder's choice in the first inning, a fly ball to right in the third, and then a soft line drive to Biskell. Last time up. Bartolo Colon against Pedro Martinez. Well, so many times, Bob, you have these great pitching matchups. They don't happen very often during the course of a season, and you build them up, build them up, and they blow up, you know, within three or four innings. Well, that's not the case here tonight. This has been terrific. Foul back by Nomar. One and two. Sox about hit the Indians seven to three. They lead them on the scoreboard, one nothing. Foul tip off of Alomar. Still one and two on Garcia Parra. In Wakefield, Dwight Gooden match up tomorrow night, seven o'clock game time. That will close out this all too brief two game homestand for the Red Sox. To Detroit for three and Cleveland for three before returning to Fenway. Down on strikes goes Garcia Parra. That's seven on the night for Cologne. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. We go to the eighth. Still one nothing, Boston. Fans, this copyrighted program is brought to you in the pay cable TV rights granted by the Boston Red Sox. Solely for the entertainment of our viewing audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the accounts and descriptions of this game without the written consent of the New England Sports Network and the Boston Red Sox is prohibited. And Way Park, home of the All Star game next year. And a below ball yard playing host to a great pitching duel tonight. Pedro Martinez leads the Indians 1 0. Travis Fryman leads off of the tribe here in the eighth inning. 
One ball, no strikes on Fryman, who's been up twice tonight and has struck out twice. Called in the second, swinging in the fifth. Rounded to third, Valentin makes the play. Valentin to Vaughn. Seems like it always happens, Bob, when you have a well-pitched game, you have great defense behind you. You know, the guys are on their toes, the thing's moving along quickly. Valentin makes a fine play, taking Number a base 15, hit away from Fryman. The catcher, Crossover step, stays low to the ground, Alomar. and of course has plenty of time to throw him out at first base. One out in the Indian eighth. Sandy Alomar bats, waves and misses at the breaking ball. One ball, one, one strike. Alomar has the infield single and a fly ball to center field on the scorecard tonight. There's the strike. A nasty one on the outside corner, 0-2. Anyway, Faithful really enjoying this one. Breaking ball down and away, 1-2. Here's the 2-2 from Pedro, and fouled off by Alomar. Martinez won his debut for the Red Sox back on opening night against the Oakland A's, winning that one 2 nothing. Pedro going seven innings in that ball game after his 12th win of the season tonight. This point of the ball game, 96 pitches thrown by Pedro Martinez. Alomar fouls it back. First walk issued by Martinez tonight. It comes with one out here in the eighth. So Alomar Number reaches 11, for the Tribe. The first baseman, Jeff Brinson. Pedro working down to the bottom of the order. The number eight hitter, the first baseman, Jeff Branson. Round ball to short. Garcia Parra goes to second for one, back to first. Branson will stay out of a double play with Garcia Parra. Having to go in the hole for that one. But they get the lead man, Alomar, at second. Too far to the right of Nomar to be able to get the double play. You have uh, Nomar going to his right. You got the left-handed batter at the plate. He's going to be able to get out of that box quickly. The backhanded play. Benjamin backs off the bag, but not in time. As Branson will beat it out. And it looks like we're going to have a pinch hitter as Jim Tomey will come out to hit the bell. Now batting for Bell. Number 25, Jim Tomey. Tomey. One of the most Tomey. feared sluggers in the American League. Tomey having an outstanding year for the Indians. The all-star first baseman. Hit by the Andy Pettit pitch last night. Left that ball game. Was in the original starting lineup, but scratched tonight. Forearm bothering him a bit, but he is available for pinch hitting duty. And we will see him now. It's the ball game last night. And he petted on the mound for the Tribe. And Tomey hit by the pitch and had to leave the game. And Tomey had been wearing out the Yankees and uh, very early in the game, Pettit gets him off the, uh, the forearm. 326 for Tomey, 24 home runs and 74 runs batted in. In the dirt, blocked by Hatterberg. One ball, no strikes. 
You know, he was so much fun to watch at the All-Star game and the home run hitting contest and during the game. I mean, he's a guy that was at the All-Star game and, and enjoyed being there. Blue collar player likes to get the uniform dirty. Big feature on Tommy this week in Baseball Weekly. That's third baseman of the tribe who moved to first base last year to make room for Matt Williams on the hot corner. 2-0. The oh. so good hitters count for Tommy. Martinez buzzing him inside with the fastball. It's three balls, no strikes. Outside corner, strike one. Tommy first in the league in on-base percentage, 435, second in walks to Ricky Henderson. Swing and a miss, strike two. Hey, see one down and away. See Tommy shaking his forearm there after that last swing. Change up by Martinez on the 3-1 count. And obviously a little bit painful there for Tommy. Downstairs. Tommy, who draws a lot of walks, as Jerry mentioned, draws one here. That will push the potential tying run into scoring position for the Indians. Brings up Kerrigan out of the Red Sox dugout. We're going to have a pinch runner now for Cleveland. It's like Sean Dunstan going in to pinch run at second base. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please, for Cleveland now running at second base, number nine. Sean Dunstan. Well, Dunstan, the Dunstan. pinch runner. He's at second. No Tommy's at first. At two base. outs. Two on. Two outs for the Indians here. Top of the eighth inning. It has been a heck of a battle. Number seven, the center fielder, Kenny Lofton. Top of the order for the Tribe, Kenny Lofton, 0 for 3 tonight. Dunstan at second, Tommy at first with two outs. That's the strike, one and one. There's a lot of change-ups for the last two hitters. Uh, Tommy, back-to-back -back change ups to start off here against Lofton. Run him around, two balls and a strike. Pop up, should end the inning. John Valentin backpedaling a third with the call and the catch. And that will retire the side. Cleveland strains a pair. Seven and a half in the books from Fenway. Pedro and the Red Sox with a one nothing lead. We've got it. your team. Here with Michael Jordan. Hey, Jansen. Derek Jeter. Sergey Fedorov. Breaking stories. We have learned tonight. That's the latest from Seattle. That's a wrap. We are all over this stack. Exclusive interviews. I hit 70 home runs every time. We are there. New York. Chicago. Seattle. San Francisco. Los Angeles. Fox Sports News. Home team. Fox Attitude. Weeknights at 10 on Nissa. Hey, Spearman! I'm the 
fastest beer man in Texas. That fan is thirsting for a cold frost brew Coors Light, and I'm the guy that's gonna give it to him, punk. This game has passed you by, old timer. I'll give this fan a cup of ice cold Rocky Mountain refreshment faster than you can blink. All right, two beers. You still got it, old man. Not bad yourself, kid. Your New England Ford dealer's factory authorized clearance is sure to make you happy with the biggest savings of the year. And this year, they'll make you even happier by starting early. Hurry in now and get low 0.9 financing for a limited time. That's less than 1% financing for 48 months on Taurus, Contour, ZX2, Escort, and Ranger. Or choose up to 1,000 cash. Don't wait. Clearance is here early. Oh, how happy you have made me. Back here at Fenway Park, the Red Sox with a 1-0 lead as they come to bat here. Bottom half of the eighth inning. Time to check our game summary. Pedro Martinez at one point retired 15 straight. He has eight strikeouts on the night. Two walks, both of them coming in the top of the eighth inning. Bartolo Colon, seven strikeouts. The difference in the game, Midre Cummings' third home run of the year. He hit it, leading off the fifth inning. It is 1-0 for the Sox. John Dunstan, the new second baseman. He was into the game as a pinch runner. Jim Tomey playing first for the Indians. Those are the defensive changes for Cleveland. As Vaughn will lead off the bottom half of the eighth inning. Sox lost a 1-0 game here to the Mets on June the 6th. They have the one nothing lead over the Tribe here tonight as Vaughn fouls this one back. One ball, one strike. Last time the Sox won a one nothing game here at Fenway Park. John Dobson beat the Yankees back in June of 92. They have a one nothing lead as we speak here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Two balls and a strike. Lone is going all the way, matched by Martinez. The Indians in the ninth inning send up Vizquel, Justice, and Manny Ramirez. A dangerous trio. Set. Here's the 2-2 now to Vaughn. Ground ball right side. Sean Dunstan at second base will underhand to Tommy. One out. Six in a row. Retired by Colon. Seven of the last eight. Number 25, the left fielder, Troy O'Leary. Vaughn retired in a ground ball to second. Here's Troy O'Leary. I thought that popped with a glove there, and this is what, the bottom of the eighth inning? Just thinking that eighth <laughs> inning, and you can still hear the wow. ball crack into the catcher's glove all over the ballpark. Here's the 1-0 now to O'Leary. O'Leary loops it to center field. Lofton is there, two outs. Number 13, the third baseman, John... Valentin. A couple of hits for John tonight. Singles in the second and fourth inning. Round ball to second and the sixth. One ball, one strike. Oh, 
One ball, two strikes. You know, the impressive thing about both these guys tonight, I mean, both power pitches, obviously, but they're making pitches where they want to make them, and they haven't missed their spots very often at all. Allenton got a piece of it, fouls it back, still one and two. Again, foul back to the screen by Valentin. No one has left Fenway tonight. And they have either a full house or very nearly so. Every seat filled on a great night for baseball. Great pitching duel and a 1-0 Red Sox lead. Here's the 1-2 to Valentin. Fly ball. Out to left center field, Kenny Lofton. Backpedaling a few steps, still short of the running track as he makes the catch, and that retires the side. So a great job by Colon tonight, and now we head to the top of the ninth inning, the Red Sox and Pedro Martinez, 1-0 up on the Tribe. Well, introducing the fastest way to get gas, Mobile Speed Pass. It's free, and it's only at Mobile. By Citizens Bank, not your typical bank. And by Priority Mail from the U.S. Postal Service, we deliver. A 1-0 lead for the Sox as Cleveland comes to bat here, top half the ninth inning. Pedro Martinez with two complete games for the Red Sox this year, one shutout. That was back on April the 11th here at Fenway against Seattle. He blanked them 5 to nothing. Pedro is 2-1 in his career in 1-0 games. They've all come with Montreal. Sox have not had a complete one a complete game 1-0 win here at Fenway since Roger Clemens beat the Indians back in 1987. Roll to third. Here's Valentin. Up throw. He got him. What a play. Valentin on the butt attempt by Vizquel. Well, it's not going to surprise anybody that uh, Vizquel bunts to third base. He's been trying to bunt all night. Valentin's in close, but you still have to make the play, and Valentin makes a great play. Goes to the bare hand, the off-balance throw, and throws a strike to move on for the out. No surprise to Valentin that he's going to bunt, but you still got to make the play, and he made it. Out by a flash at first base, Vizquel. One out in the Cleveland ninth inning. Here's David Justice. Long swing, and he missed it. One strike. Justice 0 for 3 tonight. Base hit, center field. Justice made solid contact, and the Indians have a base runner with one out. Well, they're not going to go easy, that's for sure. They had a couple of base runners in the eighth. Martinez got the uh, change up for an out to end the inning, and here's a change up, but uh, right back up the middle, right over the head of Martinez for the base hit for Justice. Mark Witten will pinch run now for David Justice. Former Red Sox, Mark Witten. Now running Started this year in the Mexican League, signed by the Tribe, and pinch running here tonight. Number 24, the right fielder, Manny Ramirez. Dangerous hitter here, Manny Ramirez, who could give the Indians the lead with one swing of the bat. Ramirez one for three tonight. Time call, the late time call by Harry Kraft. Well, as Martinez, you've got to regroup now, get back on the mound, concentration back on the hitter. That's frustrating when you're ready to make a pitch and timeouts call like that very late. on the outside corner.
Breaking ball down and away. One and one on Manny Ramirez. Brian Giles on deck. Tom Gordon warming in the bullpen for the Red Sox just in case Martinez runs into difficulty here in the ninth inning. Vaughn holding with Witten at first. See, the way I feel, he's already got difficulty right now. You got a man on first base in a 1 0 game and a hitter like Ramirez at the plate. That base runner really kind of takes out of the flow of the game, you know, stepping off, throwing the first base. Here's Ramirez following you back. Hargrove, you saw, with a relaxed look over in the Cleveland dugout. Great pitching duel. His team behind one nothing, but he sits on an 11 and a half game lead in the Central Division. This has been a terrific one to watch. For a baseball fan, Fenway Park is the place to be tonight. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Nine strikeouts for Pedro Martinez. Oh, and he got Ramirez to chase one. That was not a strike. Fastball away, down and away, off the outside edge. Ramirez can't make contact. If he made contact with that pitch, he probably would have hit it to, right to the Red, Dot, Red Sox on deck circle. Ryan Giles, the hitter for the Indians. Swing and a miss, strike one. He chased one down at his ankle. Giles one for three tonight, singled his last at bat, then was thrown out attempting to steal to end the inning. In the dirt. Saved by Hatterberg, a ball and a strike. Up and away, two balls and a strike. Everybody's standing here at Fenway. Should be the ball game. Benjamin DeVore and the Red Sox win it 1-0 on a four-hitter by Pedro Martinez. Fox are back at Fenway and what a terrific job by Pedro Martinez. First 1-0 complete game win for the Red Sox since Roger Clemens Blank Cleveland back on May the 27th of 1987. And tonight it's Pedro Martinez who four hits the tribe. High fives from everybody. What a terrific job tonight by Martinez. Citizens Bank presents not your typical player of the game. And is there any doubt who the player of the game is tonight? Pedro Martinez, the complete game shutout. His third complete game of the year, his second shutout. Four hitter for Martinez. He struck out nine, walked one. The player of the game has been brought to you by Citizens Bank, not your typical bank.
in the Mobile Extra Mile play of the game, the home run, the only run in the ball game by Midre Cummings. This coming back in the fifth inning, third home run of the year. Cummings is a DH tonight, hitting out of the nine hole. It's the home run, and that's the game winner for the Red Sox. Mobile goes the extra mile for you. That was all that Martinez needed, the home run by Midre Cummings to win his 12th game of the year against three losses. One run, seven hits for the Red Sox, no runs. Just four hits tonight for the Cleveland Indians. Wasn't Martinez terrific, Jerry? Well, this is one of the top games I think you're going to see all season. And you both pitches, uh, Bartolo Colon and Martinez tonight, outstanding. When you watch both guys work, they very seldom miss their spots at all. I mean, this was, uh, this was top shelf tonight, Bob. And we're standing by with Pedro Martinez. Let's go downstairs to Debbie Robleski. Debbie? Thank you very much, Bob. This was quite a matchup, Pedro. The young Dominican versus the middle-aged Dominican. Just tell me what it was like going out there facing Bartolo Colon tonight. Well, before the game, I told him to just go out there, do his thing, because that's exactly what I had in my mind. I, I, I know that we're good friends, and I give him some, some tips sometimes about the game and stuff like that, about pitching. But it's, it's game time. It's my enemy, and, and we have to go out there and battle like, like we have to. This is quite a lineup, the Indians. Was this one of the toughest ones you faced all year? Of course. Uh, they're one of the best in the league, so you have to tip your hat to them, and, and they're all good hitters, and I respect them all. And you got some help from the hitters tonight, too, with Mijay Cummings hitting the home run. Of course. Uh, I, I guess we needed something like this to turn it around. Hopefully tomorrow we'll come back with a positive attitude and, and ready to win again. How about the ninth inning to talk about that? Well, the, the last inning, all I had in my mind since I went in was to get to get the first the first batter out. And after that, I would, I would just work around the other batters. I knew I had Gordon behind me, so uh, I trust him a lot, and, I, and I'm, I'm sure he would have done it for me, too. And you had some good defense behind you tonight as well. Scott Hatterberg threw a runner out, and everybody seemed to be right on. Well, when things go well, everything goes well. But uh, the, 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 the worst thing is when, you, when you're struggling, and that's when everything seems to go the other way. But tonight we had everything on, and, and we were focused, so we, we played a good game. And hopefully it'll continue again tomorrow. Pedro Martinez. The road there in Arizona, their problem, they can't hit the ball. They're in an offensive slump. How about the American League updating you there? Chicago looking for the sweep of Toronto. The Yankees, you know about them. It's a final beating uh, Detroit. Cleveland losing to Boston and Pedro Martinez with a four. Network presents exclusive coverage of Boston Red Sox baseball. Tonight it's the Red Sox against the Cleveland Indians. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the ballpark. I'm Bob Kurtz, along with Jerry Remy. Indians in town again tonight to wrap up this two-game set. The two clubs are going to have to go a long way tonight to match what we had out here last night. Bartolo Colon and Pedro Martinez putting on quite a pitching performance. That was a lot of fun to watch for us. Not fun for hitters last night, though, Bob. Martinez on top of his game with fastballs for strikeouts, change-ups for strikeouts, and, of course, Bartolo Colon on the other side doing just about the same thing. He just made the one mistake in the game to Cummings. He hit the home run, and that was the difference in the ball game. And what a contrast tonight in this one. you got Tim Wakefield following Pedro Martinez, and, of course, uh, that keeps hitters off balance. Last night, they're trying to say, well, I got to be quick with the fastball. Tonight, they've got to say, wait, wait, wait against Wakefield. And, of course, you look at his numbers following Martinez in his last six starts. 4-1, 3.77 ERA. He does very well following Martinez, and he hopes to continue that tonight against this tough Cleveland ball club. Now, let's talk a little hitting. The Red Sox have had their offensive problems. They did win last night, but only one run in the seven hits. Yeah, but you can't count last night, not the way uh, Cologne was pitching, because a lot of teams are not going to hit against him, and they haven't hit against him all season long. But when you look at last night, some of the good things that happened, Darren Lewis had a couple of hits, and Valentin had a couple of hits. Both those guys have been struggling recently, so hopefully they'll help those uh, the offense get on the right track. See if they can get on the right track against Doc Gooden. He will go for the try tonight as Doc Gooden against Tim Wakefield coming your way next right here on Nesson. This is coverage of Boston Red Sox baseball is brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to go places and do things you never thought possible. Fly Southwest Airlines. By Citizens Bank, not your typical bank. By Bobble, introducing the fastest way to get gas, Bobble Speed Pass. It's free, and it's only at Bobble. And by Priority Mail from the U.S. Postal Service, we deliver. Another terrific night for baseball here at Fenway Park in Boston. Just like last night, our game time temperature 87 degrees. That's baseball weather. Red Sox will wrap up this two-game trip home to Fenway. Try and sweep this two-game series with the Cleveland Indians. 
Mike Hargrove's lineup for the Tribe tonight again has Kenny Lofton leading off playing center field. And Omar Vizquel out of a number two hole at short. David Justice hits third. He's the DH. Jim Tomey back in the starting lineup tonight, assuming his cleanup spot again. Manny Ramirez dropping down by number five in the order, followed by Brian Giles in left field. Travis Fryman at third base, Sandy Alomar behind the plate, and David Bell, the second baseman, hits number nine. And the defense tonight for the Red Sox, John Ballantin will be at third base. Noma Garcia par of the shortstop. Mike Benjamin at second and Mo Vaughn at first. Left to right, Troy O'Leary, Darren Lewis, and Darren Bragg. Scott Hatterberg behind the plate and on the mound, right-handed Tim Wakefield. Ten and four on the season, 4.21 ERA. Wakefield has faced the Indians twice this year, has a no decision back on April 18th here at Fenway. The Red Sox lost that game 7-4 to four and had a win against the Indians back in Cleveland on April the 24th. He is 3-2 and two in his career in seven starts against Cleveland. 0-1 oh, since the All-Star break, losing his last start to the Orioles, giving up a home run in the ball game to Joe Carter. Well, tonight's umpires are being brought to you by NAM, National Arbitration and Mediation, the most timely and cost-effective way to settle your legal disputes. Jim McKeon is behind the plate tonight. Dale Ford is at first base. Al Clark at second, and Terry Kraft will be the umpire tonight at third. So it was the Express last night, served up by Pedro Martinez. He fired a four-hit shutout, one nothing at the Tribe, and tonight the Indians are going to have to contend with the knuckleball of Tim Wakefield. And Hargrove in the Cleveland dugout. Number seven. Has been manager of the Tribe since 1991. Has Jim Tomey back in his starting lineup tonight. We'll be hearing from Jim later on in the ball game. Joe Kerrigan, Sox pitching coach in the foreground, and Jimmy Williams, the skipper, behind him. And he lofted, leads off for Cleveland, takes the called strike. Lofton, 278 on the year, eight round trippers, and 44 runs batted in. Wakefield to 10 wins at the All-Star break for the first time in his career. His previous high was seven wins back in the 95 season. Season, of course, the Sox went on to win the Eastern Division Championship. The looper off the bat of Lofton back to gather it in is Mike Benjamin backpedaling at second base. So they keep that leadoff man off. They keep Lofton and his speed off the base pass. They've been successful so far the entire series. Yeah, Pedro got him broke for four last night in that game and. Uh, First at bat tonight pops up the second base. You talked about the contrast in uh, Styles facing the last two pitches. Last night, the hard fastball and change it for Martinez. And tonight, of course, that knuckleball creates problems uh, for the Cleveland offense. Hopefully, it'll create problems for him. Certainly, Wakefield's hoping it will. Omar Vizquel goes after the first pitch, rolls it to his counterpart. Omar Garcia Parr throw up the line. Vaughn, though, able to get the tag on Vizquel. So two go on for the Indians here in the first. Vizquel among a number of the Tribe players talking about facing Wakefield tonight, saying how difficult it was going to be. Throw's going to tail back up the line for Nomar, but Mo has enough time to come off the bag, make the catch, and then the tag to get the out at first base. As a runner, you always feel like, well, maybe I should have slid, but a lot of times when you're running down that line, you don't know how far off the bag that throw's going to be because you're watching the first base bag. Two outs in the Indian first. David Justice is the hitter. He takes a called strike. Justice 284 in the year. 12 homers, 52 runs batted in. Has uh, struggled at the plate recently. He was out for some extra hitting today under the tutelage of Mike Hargrove. Charlie Manuel, the normal batting coach for the Cleveland Indian sidelines. He is undergoing heart bypass surgery. Brian Graham has taken his place in the dugout, but it was Hargrove that was out working with a number of the Indian hitters today. Foremost among them, David Justice. Now, with one hit last night, Justice broke an 0 for 15 that he was uh, working on. And a lot of that are coming against the Yankees in that series at Cleveland. Hargrove, like Justice, a left handed hitter. You remember Mike Hargrove's at bats, don't you, Jerry, during your career? He used to call him the human rain delay. It used to take a long time between pitches. Still managed to play games though in two hours and 30 minutes. <laughs> Hargrove was a good hitter in his playing days. 
Here's Justice whistling one right down the foul line. That's a fair ball. That's a fair ball. Touched by a fan, apparently, and Justice will be awarded second base. Now, there's a few guys in this lineup tonight for Cleveland that have uh, hit over 300 against Wakefield. Lofton, Biscale, Justice, a 304 career hitter against Wakefield. And also Travis Fryman over 300. So they got some guys that have had some success against him. I think the fans going to reach over here, interfere with the baseball, and they're going to call it a fan interference double. Justice with an extra base hit. Indians didn't waste much time getting a two-bagger here tonight. They've got uh, Justice in scoring position. Jim Tomey at the plate. Atterberg will hold on there behind the plate. Last night was the first game, Jerry, that the Indians were held without an extra base hit this year. Pedro Martinez limiting them to just the four singles. Now, these are the top two teams in doubles. The Red Sox lead the league in doubles, and Cleveland is second. Indians have had at least one extra base hit in their first 91 games this year. As a matter of fact, it went back to last year, 137 straight, dating back to last August the 13th. But uh, Pedro mowed down the tribe last night. It's the fourth time this year the Indians have been shut out. First time they've been held without an extra base hit. Lumber was pretty silent on both sides last night. We had a great pitching duel. Hope you had a chance to enjoy it along with us. Knuckle ball for strike two. A couple of swings that Tommy took in his at bat last night looked like that forearm was still bothering him. But apparently better today and back in the lineup. Yeah, hit by an Andy Pettit fastball on Tuesday. Had to leave that ball game. A scratch of the starting lineup last night did go into the game in a pinch hitting roll. Rounds this one to second, thrown out by Mike Benjamin, and that retires the Indians here in the top of the first. Justice Strambit at second base, Indians scored us. The Red Sox are coming up. Scored us in the top half of the first inning. Now it's the Red Sox turn. Jimmy Williams lineup, the uh, same as last night. Darren Lewis leads it off in center field, followed by Darren Bragg in right. Omar Garcia Parr at short. Mo Vaughn will hit cleanup. Troy O'Leary is in left field. John Valentin at third base. Scott Hatterberg once again the catcher. Mike Benjamin in second base, and last night's hitting hero, the game winner, beat Ray Cummings, the DH. And the Indians third in the league behind Baltimore and Tampa Bay in defense. Travis Fryman will be at third base. Omar Vizquel with only that one error at shortstop. David Bell at second and Jim Tomey at first. It'll be Giles Lofton and Ramirez in the outfield. Alomar behind the plate. And on the mound, Doc Gooden. We had a chance to talk to Mike Hargrove about Gooden before the ball game. He really has been throwing the ball uh, well for us, especially his last couple of times out. He started out a little shaky, but every time out has been better and better. His velocity has climbed. Uh, he Last time he threw, he threw anywhere from 90 to 93 miles an hour. Had a nice little tight slider and a good curveball, and and, uh, and he's a tremendous athlete, so that, that, that really helps. That gives you an extra fielder on, on the field, and uh, Doc has, uh, has kept us in the ball games he's, he's pitched in. Hopefully he can do it again tonight. Number 12. Battling trips on the disabled list the last couple of years. Last year with the Yankees, he uh, had a hernia surgery, and it really cost him. He really didn't get going until late August before he was really at full strength. Never really was able to put it together with the Yankees last year, although he had a nice year, 9-5, and five with a 4.91 ERA. Spent some time earlier this year on the disabled list out of spring training. He had some bicep tendonitis in his right shoulder and uh, had to make a number of he rehab starts at Buffalo. Finally got going for the Tribe uh, late May. Numbers are good for Gooden. Hits below innings pitch, 50 hits, 52 innings. Uh, held opponents to a 254 batting average. Old strike on Darren Lewis. Lewis followed by Darren Bragg and Nomar Garcia Parra here in the Boston first. Darren Lewis, who struggled on the trip, did have a couple of hits for the Sox last night. Two of their seven safeties against Bartolo Colon. Lewis quickly down on the count to the dock, 0-2. Lewis has had a lot of experience against Gooden in the National League, a 333 hitter against Doc. Now ball, base hit. The 0-2 pitch grounded between Fryman and third and Vizquel and short, and Lewis is aboard to start the ball game. Well, we touched upon it in the open, Bob, that a couple of guys last night had a few hits. So Lewis had two. Valentin had two. Certainly uh, would be good to see Lewis get hot again. He struggles some recently, and of course, so important hitting leadoff at the top of that lineup. 
Lead off man on. Here is Darren Bragg at 285 homers and 35 runs batted in. One of the reporters was asking Jimmy Williams in his pregame uh, press conference if uh, Jimmy had considered putting Midre Cummings number two. Here's Lewis, and Lewis swipes second base. Wooden has the reputation of being easy to run against, or, and Lewis testing him right away. Number 15 on the season for Lewis. You're right, Bob. It takes a good and a long time to get the ball home. Alomar's thrown out 29% of the runners this year, but an easy stolen base there for Lewis. Head first slide. But the question was, would Cummings bat number two? And Jimmy said, yeah, he thought about it, but he liked Bragg in that role. So Bragg, he's really doing well in that role right now. They'll leave well enough alone. Bragg number two. Cummings is hitting number nine as the DH. Now Bragg's job is to at least get Lewis to third base. Reaches out and fouls it back. One ball, two strikes. Last start for Gooden against the Red Sox came on September 9th of last year. He was no decision in a New York 8-6 win over Derek Lowe and the Red Sox. Lifetime 0-1 in the regular season. And, of course, uh, the Sox beat Gooden twice during the 86 series, both in Game 2 and Game 5 of that series against the Mets. Highest total of strikeouts for Gooden at the Major League level this year has been five. He's done that a couple of times. Had only one in his last outing, but he pitched great against Minnesota. Bragg is called out on strikes. Breaking ball from the dock. The minor league level this year on those rehab starts had a few strikeout games of eight, but as I mentioned, five at the major league level. A lot of times you see the off-speed pitches away from Darren Bragg. This time they go to the inside corner and picks up his first strikeout. Bragg is gone. Here's Nobar. 310 on the year. 13 homers, 58 runs batted in. Lewis swipes second. He's still at second base now with one out. Garcia Parra takes a called strike. Nobar hitless in the ball game last night. He was 0 for 4. Garcia Parra has gone hitless in two consecutive games just once this year. That was on June 5th and 6th against the Mets. Last ball, missed inside. One ball, one strike. Both teams heading west after this one. Minnesota, uh, the Red Sox heading to Detroit. And the Indians will go to Chicago. Here's a base hit for Garcia Parra. Extra bases down that right field line. Rounding third into score is Lewis. It's a two-bagger for Garcia Parra. The Red Sox draw first blood. They lead it 1-0. Now, Nomar has gone hitless, as you mentioned, only uh, one time this year in two straight games. That was against the Mets. He was hitless last night, but not tonight. Takes the breaking ball right down the right field line and quickly gets the Red Sox on the board with a double. Garcia Parra now with 19 doubles on the season, and that was RBI number 59. Sox jump ahead of the Tribe, 1-0. Omar at second base. One out, and here's Mo Vaughn. Strike to Vaughn, who was hitless last night in three trips. No, 325 on the year, 23 round trippers, and 60 runs batted in. On sixth in hitting in the American League. Mo is eighth in the home run derby. In, Doc Gooden goes inside, one and two. And a mixed reception for Vaughn as he came to the play tonight. Which is uh, the reception that greeted Mo here last night in his first trip back to Fenway Park following the All-Star break.
Gooden goes away. Two balls, two strikes. Gooden was a winner against the Twins his last time out. Beat them on Saturday. Jacobs Field. It was his best start of the year. He had a four hits. He scattered over seven innings. Gave up just a home run to David Ortiz. Second time this year, Gooden has beaten the Twins and Brad Radke. And here he strikes out Bo Vaughn. Second strikeout for Doc here in the first inning. Both strikeouts for Gooden on that curveball, the over-the-top breaking pitch. And the, almost the same location as against Bragg, inside corner. 85th time that Vaughn has struck out this season. The eyes fire up, but uh, no contact that time for Mo. One down on strikes. Here's Troy O'Leary slicing one foul down the left field line. One strike. 284 for Troy. 14 home runs. 48 runs batted in. O'Leary's been stuck on that 14 home run figure for a while. His last one coming June 22nd against Philadelphia. One ball and one strike. First year for Doc Gooden out of New York City. Big years with the Mets, couple of years with the Yankees, including a no-hitter a couple of years ago. Signing with Cleveland as a free agent during the offseason. Active a screen, two balls, two strikes. Another hot, humid night here at Fenway certainly takes its toll, you would think, as the night goes on, but you'd never know it by the pitches last night. Seemed like Martinez and Colon got stronger as the game went on. Both of them from the Dominican Republic, where it's warm. Doc Gooden's from Tampa, Florida. He should be used to it. Yeah, but they've had to go through a spring here in New England and in Cleveland, and it's not warm at that time of the year. No, it's not. Talked Cologne last night, dumping that bucket of water over his head at one time to cool off. Here's O'Leary slicing another one foul. Still two balls, two strikes. That's like they say, guys that grow up around here can play well in the cold weather. That's baloney. <laughs> Why, weren't you a cold weather player? I don't think anybody's a cold weather player. Because we played it, that doesn't mean you like it. You have no choice to get that big 20-game schedule in high school. 19 of which are rained out. O'Leary drives it to right field. Ramirez is back and will make the catch. Just shy of the warning track, and that retires the side. But the Sox get a run. They've got a 1-0 lead after one. Nothing lead. Let's take a look at the average leaders in the American League. Brought to you by New England Ford dealers. Yvonne Rodriguez just below 350. Hal Morris at 336. Matt Stairs, 331. Todd Walker, 328, and Jim Tomey of the Indians at 326. Coming into the ball game tonight. In Wakefield now with a one-run lead to work with as he goes out to the mound for the second inning. Manny Ramirez, Brian Giles, Travis Fryman coming up for the Tribe. There are the numbers for Ramirez on the year, over 300, the 20 dingers. Field as usual, all set to go, waiting for Ramirez, and the knuckleball flutters across for strike one. Now Ramirez is one guy that has had problems against Wakefield, 167 in his career against him. You say in general it's the big swingers that have uh, the most problems? Or? Well, tough to tell. When those big swingers make contact, though, they go a long way against knuckleball pitches. One not solid contact, obviously, as it's fouled back. One ball, two strikes. Ramirez has been uh, decent this month with five home runs. Nobody can touch Albert Bell. Bell is uh, homered ten times in the month of July, nine times since the All Star break, nine times in his last eight games. 
including both ends of a doubleheader yesterday, swung on and missed by Ramirez. Down on strikes, first victim of the night for Wakefield. Yeah, the first time Wakefield faced the Indians here at uh, Fenway had six strikeouts against Cleveland. Then he went back in his next game at Cleveland and had three strikeouts in the game that he won. That looked more like the curveball that time uh, to get the strikeout. One out in the Indian second inning. Left fielder Brian Giles. That's the strike, says Jim McKean. 70 for Giles, 11 home runs, six of them coming very early, very early in the season, and 39 runs batted in. Giles hit six home runs in his first 13 games, has five since then. Down two strikes to Wakefield. Lines this one to Benjamin at second base, two outs. Let's go downstairs now, call in Bob Rogers and get an update on the Yankees and the Tigers in Detroit. All right, Bob. Well, David Cohn is looking for his 14th win of the season. Also looking for his fifth straight win. Second pitch of the game, Chuck Knobloch. Tall Jack, his eighth of the season. And just like that, the Yankees have an early lead. It's one to nothing in Detroit. The Yankees flattened the Bengals last night, 11 to nothing. Detroit, of course, next stop for the Red Sox. They'll be there tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon, three over the weekend in the Motor City. Travis Fryman, 272 on the season. Fryman fouls it back. Good, of course, Fryman's old team. His old team has had problems. 38-53 on the season, last place in the Central. 14 and a half out of first place. Fryman came up with the Tigers in 1990 and played there through the end of last year. Played over a thousand games. In a Tiger uniform, 274 career hitter. Diamond represented Detroit in four All Star games, the last time, 1996. Last knuckleball clocked at 60 miles an hour. Last night against Pedro, what, 94, 95? Fouled off by Fryman. Is there something to the Wakefield following Martinez, or do we make too much of it, or is it just a theory, or... Dr. Remy, what do you say? Well, apparently Jimmy Williams and Joe Kerrigan think so because that's the way they wanted it from the first day of the season. I think there is something to it. I mean, I think no matter who Wakefield follows, it's going to be difficult. But when you face a guy that throws as hard as Martinez and that great changeup. Ryman hits this one pretty well out to left field. Back goes O'Leary. O'Leary is looking up, and that's going to drop in the screen for a home run. And the ball game is tied on the home run by Travis Ryman. Remember that theory about when it's low, let it go, when it's high, let it fly against hitting Wakefield? Well, it uh, doesn't quite add up on this one because this pitch is going to be low, but it's going to go a long way. 15, the catcher, that ball down Sandy around his knees Alomar. was still able to lift it up in that net for the home run. Number 18 on the season for Fryman. As I mentioned, he's one of the guys in this lineup that's handled Wakefield fairly well in his career. Andy Alomar, fly ball down the right field line, chased by both Vaughn and Benjamin. Neither can get there. It's just a long strike. Talk about facing Martinez one night and then Wakefield the next. That's what the Indians were talking about in the clubhouse after the game. Omar Vizquel in particular last night. And they're going to get the combination of Martinez and Wakefield in the doubleheader next Tuesday in Cleveland. They'll get Pedro in game one and they'll get Wakefield in game two. You know, when you face a Martinez, so that's a hard 0 for 4. You know, I mean, it's, it's a battle all night long. You're much more comfortable facing Wakefield, but it's an aggravating 0 for 4. Offline drive, find safety, base hit, right field. All this happening with two outs here in the second inning. Alomar reaching with a two-out single to right. 
Well, Alamont now with a mini four-game hitting streak. A little inside outswing that time. Took the line drive to the opposite field. That's an approach a lot of hitters will take. They'll try to wait a long time and just shoot the ball the other way. Red Sox will see Buddy Bell tomorrow. They're looking at his son David play second base for the Indians tonight. David steps into one, drives this one deep to left field. It is going, it is gone. A home run for David Bell. A couple of bombs by the Indians here in the second inning. Rymans was more of a fly ball that found the net. Bell hit his a long way, and the Indians now have a 3-1 lead. Alomar scoring in front of David Bell. Well, back to the theory of when it's high, let it fly, because this one is a high pitch, and Bell lets it fly. Right about let a high, and of course, those are the ones that will go a long way. Wakefield's not had a two-run home game, a uh, two-home run game, I should say, since back in his second and third start. Since that time, the most they've had in a game is one against them, but uh, already two hit tonight. Now 14 on the year. Bell had been struggling at Number the plate. Seven, the center fielder. Kenny yeah, four for his last 27. Make that five for 28. So the Tribe with a 3-1 lead. Kenny Lofton, little blooper here to short. Garcia Parra makes the catch, and that retires the side. So all after two outs, Ryman homered, and so did Bell. Bell with a teammate aboard, and the Indians have a 3-1 lead after one and a half. Taking a 3-1 lead as we move to the bottom of the second. American League East rivals the Toronto Blue Jays fly to Fenway. The Battle of the Red Sox the 23rd of July, 24th, 25th, and 26th. Come on out to Fenway and catch a game for tickets called 617-482-4-SOX. Now those four games against the Blue Jays, the only time that the Red Sox will be home between tonight and August the 11th. John Valentin leads off of the Old Town team against Doc Gooden after the first pitch to right field. Manny Ramirez is there to make the catch one out. Well, Doc Gooden now up by a couple of runs. Teammates gave him three. He's got a 3-1 lead. Batting seven, number 10, the catcher. Here's the Red Sox catcher, Hatterberg. Scott Hatterberg. 274 on the year, eight homers, 23 runs batted in. Hatterberg uh, throwing out Brian Giles of the Indians trying to steal last night. Surely in a one nothing ball game, very big play. And another big play was the play by Ballington on the bunt in the ninth inning. A number of good plays last night. You mentioned Valentin's. Kenny Lofton had a nice catch. Over the shoulder catch on the warning track in center field for the Indians. Hatterberg grounds it right side. Booted there by Bell and Hatterberg will reach. Bell couldn't make the play on the backhand and the Red Sox get a runner with one out. Well, when you say booted, I think that's correct because I think it hit his boot. Goes to make the Bad backhand game. and play, and I'm not quite sure Number he got the glove on it. Looked like it hit his foot. Baseman, Mike Benjamin. Right there off the knee, and uh, it's going to go as an error against the second baseman, Bell. That'll be his ninth. See, he didn't work from the ground up with the glove. He tried to stab at the ball, and the uh, ball got by him and hit him in the knee. Error charge to Bell. Here's Mike Benjamin. Wings and misses. One strike to count. 308 average for Mike. One home run. That came on July the 5th against the White Sox. His first home run since June of 96. And he was in the National League. Hit it against Houston and Shane Reynolds. So first homer for Benjamin in a couple years. Gooden broke in as a fireballer for the Mets in 1984. 
the rookie of the year. He has a Cy Young Award to his credit. Benjamin swings and misses with Hatterberg taking off at first base on the 2-1 pitch. And it's now 2-2. Two and two. A little hit and run put on by Jimmy Williams. They have that count 2-1. and one. You expect to get a strike, but not an easy pitch for Benjamin to handle. The ball was inside. And at least he did make the contact, foul the ball off, and uh, Hatterberg gets to go back to first base. They don't make contact on the hit and run. A lot of times it's a throw him out at second. Now a full count. Hatterberg measuring his lead over at first base. He is off with the 3-2 pitch. It's up and in on Benjamin Ball 4. Now the Red Sox have two on with one out. We'll check in with Bob Rogers. Bob? All right, Bob. Matinee baseball. The Blue Jays snapped their four-game losing streak, and it's Carlos Delgado snapping a one-for-30 slump with a couple of RBI singles. This one made it 4-2 to two to Toronto. The Blue Jays win it 5-2. to two. By the way, Albert Bell went 0-for-4 with three strikeouts. Toronto losing both ends of a doubleheader to the White Sox in the ball game last night. Falling a couple of games under 500. They make up one with a win this afternoon. Here's Midre Cummings. Makes a called strike. All three home runs have been huge for the Red Sox. One tied a game in Detroit. The other one won a game against the Tigers. And last night's was the game winner. The only run on the scoreboard is Martinez outdueled Cologne. Cummings let off the fifth inning against Bartolo Colon last night with a home run into the right field seats. So three big home runs for Cummings, who still finds himself, Jerry, hitting number nine. <laughs> How dare Jimmy Williams put him ninth? Hey, it worked last night. Foul down the right field line. One ball, two strikes. Well, it certainly sounds that uh, Reggie Jefferson's going to be out for a while, which is not good news for the Red Sox. Should mean more at bats against right handers for Midre Cummings. And of course, with the trading deadline approaching in a couple of weeks, uh, we'll have to see what moves, if any, the Red Sox uh, make. Certainly, they'll be trying to make some moves, maybe for a pitcher. Today is the 16th, trading deadline just over two weeks away on July the 31st. Cummings is called out on strikes as Gooden gets the call over the inside corner. Now, all three strikeouts for uh, Gooden have been against lefties. And all on the same pitch, the breaking ball on the inside part of the plate. Number 20, the center fielder. the exact fielder, same pitch that Darren, we got Vaughn and Darren is. Bragg. Now, decent career numbers for Darren Lewis against Doc Gooden from their days of the National League. Lewis had a single here in the ball game tonight. Leading off of the Sox in the first inning and has scored the lone Boston run to this point. Takes one up high. One ball, no strikes. Lewis single to open the bottom of the first. Stole second and scored on Nomar Garcia. Parr is doubled into the right field corner. Quinton's been about 90-91 with the fastball so far. Hitters count for Darren here. Two balls, no strikes. Red Sox trying to take advantage of the extra out given them by Giles' error here in the second. 2-0 pitch. Lewis in the air to left field, but not enough on it. Settling into the glove of Brian Giles, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, one error. Sox strand the pair. We played two here at Fenway tonight. The Indians three and Boston one. Baseball on TV, so nice. Uh, like Ernie Banks says, let's play two. So one here, and then one immediately following this ball game for you tonight here on Nesson as part of the Fox Thursday night baseball package. Tampa Bay Devil Rays out west to take on the Anaheim Angels. That's coming up immediately after our ball game tonight. So Sox and Indians followed by Tampa Bay and Anaheim tonight right here on Nesson. And of course, if you're a Red Sox fan, you root for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays in that one. Now, Anaheim might well be part of that wild card chase. You want to peek that far ahead. What are the wild card standings now? Sox have a 
four-game lead over Texas. Right now, Texas running second to Anaheim in the West. Sox are up by nine over the Blue Jays and ten and a half up on the Orioles. Who are making a charge, by the way. The Orioles have won, what, seven in a row now? Yeah, they're down to 25 and a half out of first place now. Whittling away. Omar Vizquel looks at a strike quickly down two strikes to Wakefield. We'll get our count right. One ball, two strikes is now the count. And that'll even things at two and two. Vizquel bounced out to Garcia Parr at short. But after the first pitch, his first at bat back in the first inning. Sitting here on a 2-2 pitch. Down on strikes. Second strike out of the night for Wakefield. That Manny Ramirez last inning. Well, Vizquel, one of the toughest guys in the league to strike out. He's only struck out now uh, 37 times, and that's the seventh best in the league. Number and Wakefield gets him that time. The designated hitter. You know the toughest David guy in the league to strike out Justice. is? Mike Caruso, the rookie shortstop for the Chicago White Sox. Just saw him a couple of series ago. Wasn't the guy before him, Ozzie Guillen, very difficult to strike out to? Yeah, he was always at the top of that list. Ozzie never got the two strikes. Ever? <laughs> David Justice, bad seem team. like never. <laughs> David Justice, the designated hitter. There's his career numbers against Wakefield. Which is up high. Justice whistled the double off the right field wall back in the first inning. You know the ninth toughest guy to strike out in the American League is? This might surprise you. Nomar. Is that right? Yep. O'Leary puts it away, and there's two outs in the inning. Jim Tomey coming up now for the Indians. We had a chance to talk to Jim before the ball game and ask him, what's it like to try and hit that knuckleball? You know, there's really no way to approach it. I guess you try to look for the ball up and uh, not try to do too much, but just try to... It's tough. It's probably one of the toughest, toughest pitches to handle because it's moving so much, and you, you don't want to necessarily try to be too aggressive, but you got to... I guess the big thing is just make contact. What do you say, Jerry? That's a good start. You <laughs> yeah. try to make contact. Yeah, I mean, you... Sort of befuddles hitters. Well, the knuckleball's tough to hit and it's tough to talk about, too. That's like when the pitching coach goes out to the pitcher and, you know, don't give him anything good to hit but throw strikes along the same uh, type of thing. He was talking about if it's high, let it fly. Same theory you were talking about earlier when he was talking about it. Fouled at the plate. One ball, two strikes. Romeo leader in that Cleveland clubhouse. Was a third baseman. Shifted to first to make uh, room for Matt Williams last year. His swings at the plate. Two balls, two strikes. Knuckle ball drops down across the plate for strike three. Three strikeouts for Wakefield. One, two, three. Go the Indians in the third. Still 3 1. One lead coming out to Fenway Thursday, July 23rd, when the Red Sox take on the Toronto Blue Jays. First 15,000 fans, 15 under, receive a baseball card book compliments to Major League Baseball, which includes 10 Major League Baseball player cards. For tickets, call 617 482 4 Sox. Aaron Bragg leads off the third inning for the Red Sox against Doc Gooden, followed by Nomar Garcia Parra, and then Mo Vaughn. Bragg was a strikeout victim his first time up. Goes after the first pitch this time. Rounds to Jim Tomey at first base. One pitch and one out. Now we had two Dominican uh, on the hill last night. Bartolo Colon and, of course, Pedro Martinez. All the teams, a lot of the teams, very active in the Dominican Republic. Certainly the Red Sox have are in there with both feet. And last night, right-handed pitcher Enrico Benitez, who is 17 years old. For the Red Sox Dominican Summer League team, pitched a 1-0 no-hitter, a 7-0 no-hitter in the first game of a doubleheader against the Los Angeles Dodgers entry. So congratulations to Fabrico Benitez. 
great baseball players coming out of the Dominican Republic and the Red Sox are very active down there. Omar Garcia par at bat here for the Sox with one out in the third. Nomar hits it high in the air to left field. Giles back, looking up, going. It's not gone. It's off the wall. That scraped the wall on the way down. Didn't have enough room to carry over the wall, but off the paint there. It's a two-base hit for Nomar. Well, that's a good example of a Fenway double. Uh, the win again tonight, just like last night, blowing outside the left field wall. And I believe it pushed this ball just enough to get it off the wall. Looked like for a second it might have enough legs to be a home run, but you see it scraped the wall on the way down and back-to-back -back doubles for Garcia Farah. Knocked in a run with his 19th double of the season in the first inning. He's at second base with one out here in the second, and Bo Vaughn getting ready to do battle against Doc Gooden. Gooden one round one tonight, getting Vaughn on strikes. Had him swinging at the breaking ball back in the first inning. Same situation here for Moe with Nomar at second base. Gooden missing downstairs, one ball, no strikes. Eric Alamo might have been crossed up on that pitch by Gooden too. breaking ball catches the inside corner one ball one strike on two for eight career wise against Gooden with a double Gooden can field his position well throws out Bo Vaughn as Garcia Parra moves from second to third I'll say one thing, Gooden has been consistent with that breaking ball against the lefties. He's kept it inside, and you'll see on this pitch here, Mo can't get his arms extended. Breaking ball down and in, and uh, Mo almost jams himself with that swing. And you're right, Bob, Gooden is a very good defensive uh, fielding pitcher. Gets the easy out at first base. Two outs for the Sox. Troy O'Leary watches one, sail wide, one ball, no strikes. O'Leary lines out to Ramirez at right field back in the first inning. Two and oh. Sox come into tonight, 54 wins, 38 losses. Second best record in the American League with the Yankees. Sox are now one game better than the Indians following their 1-0 win over the Tribe here last night. Sox have had good success against Cleveland, winning six of the seven meetings so far this year, including the 4-1 and one mark here at Fenway Park. Popped up by O'Leary. David Bell, the second baseman, will make the play, and that retires the side. No run. The fourth inning on tap. Indians have a 3-1 lead over the Red Sox. Manny Ramirez stepping in here against Tim Wakefield. Ryan Giles, Travis Fryman to follow. Ramirez sends one foul and back of the Red Sox dugout, one strike. Over the 300 figure for the month of July, including five round trippers for Ramirez. Rounded here to Nomar Garcia Parra. The long throw, the big stretch by Mo Vaughn and one out. Wakefield's now retired five in a row since David Bell's two run homer back in the second. Number 22. The All the runs fielder. coming on the long ball for Ryan the Indians tonight. Ryman a solo home run with two outs in the second. Alomar followed with a single to right, and then David Bell knocked it over the wall. Here's Brian Giles, the left fielder. Looks at ball one. The Indians have clubbed 115 home runs now. That is fourth best in the American League. They're third in the American League as far as scoring runs behind Texas and New York.
three and zero on Giles. The Blue Jays have been hitting a lot of home runs. They've got 122 home runs. Of course, Seattle leads with 150. Blue Jays stealing a lot of bases and hitting a lot of home runs. Wakefield walks Giles on four pitches. First walk issued by Wakefield tonight. Sox had a one nothing lead the last time Travis Fryman came up. That was with two outs in the second inning. And here's Fryman against Wakefield. It's a long, high fly ball. And it will drop over the monster and into the screen. The home run for Fryman, and that tied the ball game. See that uh, Fryman has done a pretty good job against Wakefield in his career. Fryman's a 274 career hitter. It's about 60 points higher than that against Wakefield. One ball, no strikes. Troy traded Fryman to the Arizona Diamondbacks minutes after the expansion draft last November in exchange for infielder Joe Randa, infielder Gabe Alvarez, and pitcher Matt Drews. Fryman signed a five-year contract with the Devil Rays and then was promptly traded to Cleveland for Matt Williams. Vaughn holds with Giles at first base. Wakefield off the mound, boots the ball, but it's a foul ball. Ruled a foul ball. That's a break for the Red Sox. I think the ball hit right off Fryman's foot before making its way out to the mound. Looked like a fastball that time that hits Fryman in the toe. It's two balls and a strike. Giles at first base with one out. As Giles was on the disabled list with a sprained ankle. You have to wonder if he's at 100%. He got thrown out last night stealing second base. Does have six on the season. Round into third. John Ballington goes to second for one. Benjamin back to ball on the old around the horn. 5-4-3. Inning ending double play. Three and a half played here at Fenway Park. Fox trailing the tribe three to one. Sox set the bat here in the home half of the fourth inning. Check our game summary. David Bell's two-run homer. Back in the second inning, the difference in the ball game. Fryman had tied the game earlier with his fourth career home run against Wakefield. And Nomar Garcia Parra has a couple of doubles for the Red Sox, knocked in a run back in the first inning. But the Sox trailing 3 1 as John Ballanton leads off the home half to fourth. Ballanton, Hatterberg, and Benjamin to face the doctor. Ball, no strikes. Not exactly a lot of runs scored for Gooden in his starts. They've only been averaging just over uh, three runs a game for him. A total of five runs in his three losses this season. Well, he has his three so far in this game tonight. Comes in three and three. Nifty 3.29 ERA as he misses upstairs to Valentin. Good and rookie of the year with the Mets in the National League in 1984. Won 17 games that year. Won the Cy Young the following year going 24 and four with a 1.53 ERA. First three years in the majors for Doc, 84, 85, and 86 were his three best. Valentin to right center field. That's a base hit. 